Hello. Hi. Uh, it is uh, Saturday, which normally means that we're going to be playing some Skyrim and uh, pulling our hair out at the uh, <laughs> the bugginess of it and uh, the instability of our uh, of our connection, I guess, uh, on Saturdays. Apparently, it's bad. I don't know. I don't know. It might just be the Skyrim curse, but that I have. That's specific to me. But this week, instead, we are playing an oldie but a goodie. We're going to be tooling around here in Tailspire. Um, just uh, just getting back into it. You turn the, the music back up here and sound effects so it's not just me. There we go. Wait. I guess I'll just have it all the way up. Why not? You can still hear me. Let me turn. Wait. Let me turn up. <laughs> I'm looking at the levels. All right, there we go. Just got to find a good one. Seven. Seven seems good. All right, cool, cool. All right, so uh, we're just diving right back into the board that we were building, which is the Tomb of Horrors. Um, we're almost done with it. We just gotta, we just gotta top it off. We gotta d do some detail on the top of this, uh, the mound in which the tomb is housed, and uh, do the the signature skull pattern here on the top somewhere in this area and we're done so will we get that done today i hope <laughs> it's unlikely uh it's been a while since i've been in tailspire at all um so i'm a little out of practice um some of it's actually kind of kind of like easy it's i mean i'm like right back in it like some of this it's just you hold down shift to select a tile that's already down, and you can either right-click it to... What does right-click do? Right-click deletes it. <laughs> Left-click picks it up. Center-click copies it. There you go. That's easy. Easy sauce. Um, there's no easy sauce, sir. You made that up. Uh, so, yeah, we're just gonna... We're just trying to smooth out these edges here and make a, make a nice, easy gradient from the, the the sides of the cliff to the top we've already we already started doing that it's this we did last time we were in here we did this and we're just looking to do to do more of it so let's just keep going let's just get right into it there's no there's no there's no real uh stress or anything this is great <laughs> this is a vacation man uh from skyrim <laughs> Oh, to need a vacation from a game. Come on. I wish my life was like that. So, you know, we're just going to keep placing these treetops so that they look like just verdant hillside. And uh, it'll just climb up to the, the top there. And we're just going to do every edge of this frickin'... <laughs> every edge of this frickin' mound. Which, eh. Seems daunting, but once we get into it, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, and we're just going to chat about stuff. About whatever you want to chat about. Um, I'll start. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what did I... Oh, I wa oh I've been watching um, The Legend of Vox Machina on uh, on Prime, Amazon Prime, which is surprising because I thought it was coming out on, on Netflix, but apparently that did not happen. Um, and I don't know the reason for it. There's probably a reason for it. They might have talked about it. They may not have. They might be cagey about it. I don't know. I haven't been watching the actual uh, Critical Role uh, in a while. I've, I missed all of the second half of the second campaign, and... I haven't I haven't even started in on their third campaign. I missed the the the, the in between thing that they did. I didn't see any of that, so I'm a little out of touch there. So, but I am watching the cartoon, and I gotta say I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I was a little weirded out by the first couple episodes because I guess maybe I don't remember the first part of that campaign. Because um, it was all it was a long time ago that I saw that. Um, it was a long time ago, and of course they they definitely made had to make some changes to, you know, uh, fit it to the format and to also 
make it flow, you know, narratively better. So, uh, I, I do notice some things, but I, I like the way they're they're doing it. And I don't want to give away any spoilers for people who are watching it and have not seen the actual YouTube uh, stream, game streams, uh, gameplay streams. Um, but uh, I will say that they summed up the first bit rather well, while hinting at some important things. And they got right to a really meaty part of the story pretty quickly, which is good. And now it seems very nicely flowing for what, 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 what episode nine episode nine is, the, is where we are now all the ones that are out were on nine um and for nine episodes getting to that point pretty good and we're starting to see um character depth yeah that was i think the biggest thing in the in the in the first episode was just like well here are all these characters i mean i you know having watched the the, the, the the game streams are like oh yeah these guys i know these guys but for anyone just watching the cartoons like okay who are these assholes <laughs> you don't know it's like why is that guy huge and why is those tattoos why is he gray and we still don't know that <laughs> well they i know that but people who are just watching it and don't have any idea about D D or 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 the characters or anything like that they have no idea what's going on but uh they'll get to it I, I have a feeling because they uh they're getting to one of the characters one or two of the characters right now a little more in depth actually definitely two 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 of the characters more in depth and I, I get the feeling that they're going to do that for each one. And they did a little bit with, uh, hey, Soapy, what's up? Uh, playing some Tail Spire. Much requested. <laughs> Skyrim is dead. It's dying. We'll say that. Uh, it's going to be back next week. But then the following week, we're going to be back with Tail Spire. So we're doing a flip-flop. We're doing flip-flops. So one week on, one week off. And uh, we'll see We'll see how we get how we do. Um and uh, I, I want to get through the Anniversary Edition content on Skyrim. Kind of. <laughs> I do. I do want to. I want to see. I want to see what, what it has to. If we do reach a point where we're just like, all right, screw it, then you know, then we do. Then 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 it is what it is. But uh, for now, for now, I, I'm kind of uh, resolute in in seeing it through, <laughs> for better or worse. Um, but we're gonna be we're gonna be staggering. So we're doing some of this, and then, then, then Skyrim again next week, and then more of this the following week, and then Skyrim the following week. Uh, this is still the Tomb of Horrors. We're, we're, we're going through, we're, we're building the, 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 the top of the mound of the Tomb of Horrors, which we, which we built. This was the last thing we built um, when we were streaming. Uh, oh, where's the cutaway? There's the cutaway. Why is it not cutting away? Cut away. Okay, or don't. <laughs> Um, hold on, and cut away. Oh, I gotta zoom in. That's why. <laughs> zoom in. It's been a while. It has been a while since I played around with Tailspire. All right, so here, Tomb of Horrors. Um, that is the. This is the the Hall of Orbs uh, and murals and stuff. Uh, we have the. Hall with the the green demon. There's the green demon as best as we could build it, <laughs> given given whoa, given what we have at our disposal. Let's do this. There we go. Um, so if you put your arm in there, your arm's gone. <laughs> if you climb in the mouth, you're gone. Um, we have the the glowing portal that takes you someplace bad. We have um, yeah. Uh, wow, the secret door. That takes you into the uh, the room of doors. There's so many doors and secret doors in here. It seems egregious. And then that takes you to the room of doors. And then you get the secret door here, which takes you to the chamber with the gargoyle that's holding... I forget what he's holding. But something with a gargoyle. And then... <laughs> and then... Oh, there's secret another secret door in the room of orbs that takes you through the caverns into the bottomless pit. It does have a bottom, it's just very, very long down there. And then there are more secret tunnels that take you over to, uh, where is it? Um, oh, this room, the chapel, with the, uh, with the with the lightning bolt trap in this chest that goes straight down there, killing many PCs, and then yet another glowing portal. Don't trust the glowing portals. 
ever, don't ever trust the glowing portals. And then another secret door that takes you down into the into the mess, uh, into. Whoops, let me scroll this down. It's probably hard to see with the darkness there. There we go. Um, more secret, more doors that take you through. And guess what's between each of these doors? Uh, if this will cut away, please. There we go. Um, between each of those doors is a pit trap. These are all pit traps down here. So if you step wrong in here or here, you fall to your death. <laughs> and if you step wrong here, you could also fall to some pain. But there's also a secret door at the bottom of that pit trap. Which takes you down. See, this is the kind of dungeon that it's just, it's a mess when you look at it. But then, when you try to run it, your players just die. That's, that's all. That's all it is. <laughs> but if you end up coming down here, and that's the beautiful part about this secret door in particular. This one that we're on right now. If you find it, and you go through here, and you come down these steps, you think you find a Sarerac. Because he stand there's a, there's a zombie here with a with a, a permanent illusion upon it to make it look like a lich. So and the entire room has illusions like woven into it so that when you're fighting it, it seems like the room is shaking and it's epic and oh no. And once you kill it, the room everything seems like it's falling and you're, everything's falling apart. So and there's a bunch of like random like treasure scattered around the room to throw the pieces off the trail. So they find maps for treasure that's like miles away. They find things that look expensive. So they go and cash them in and go live a good life thinking, Oh, we did it. Ha ha. Hooray. Um, so they grab what they can and, and, and skedaddle thinking that they did the deed when in fact they did not do the deed. That was just, that was just the MacGuffin. Uh, there's still much, much more bad things. So if they don't notice the secret door that's right here. Where's my flashlight? There it is. The secret door that's right here that takes them into the workshop. The laboratory... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oop, there we go. Uh, into the workshop slash laboratory. Um, and then subsequently into more <laughs> more pit traps. Jeez. Uh, yep, dead end with a... Uh, I think there's a trap there as well. Um, this room, which has a bunch of clutter, and it also is trapped. False door. <laughs> secret door here, which takes you down here. Another false door. Whoops. Um, what's this over here? Uh, a false door that hides a secret door. Come on. <laughs> that also has a secret door in the floor, which takes you around to the big room of columns. And, uh, yeah. This one's a, this one's a bit of a because then you have two more green... Okay, I'm getting a little too in-depth on this, but yes, this is this is a very expansive dungeon. It is... Uh, it's everything to ev all people. <laughs> Not really. Uh, it's it's just... Uh, yeah, it would be sick with first-person mode. For sure. Oh, man. Um, you can kind of do it, but it's... Uh, yeah, you gotta really... Really have good camera work, and I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a good camera work. But yes, we, we've done the, the whole thing. We've done the whole in, interior, the, all the innards, they're all done. Um, we're just uh, we're just doing all the, the little, little dress-ups part now. Just making it look nice. Just getting the, putting the candy coating on the candy that it, that is contained within. Um, but yes, I was, I was speaking about, uh, uh, the Legend of Vox Machina cartoon that I uh, started watching, um, and yeah, it, it's been doing—it's pretty good. Um, I will say for people who have not seen the game streams, uh, it's like getting yeah, getting into the the characters right off the bat is a little would be a little weird because they're just like, okay, who are these? <laughs> why is that? Why are two of them small? Why are there mostly elves? Why does that guy have a gun? <laughs> that kind of thing, which I'm sure, which I'm sure, is happens more often than not. But they are getting into the character building, um, and the whys, and and the whys and hows, as to why the characters are the way they are, and all that fun stuff. Um, very organically, which is good. Captures the stupidity of D and D parties and how horrible Violet the the, the would be in regular world. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. 
it uh, it's a it's a, it's a good it is a very good um, illustration of what usually happens what how a DD party might evolve <laughs> or actually evolve um, but also in the course devolve because in the beginning they, they're definitely <laughs> the kind of like okay we're just we're just here to, to just get money and attack and attack stuff um, for sure and I, I will say that they're doing a good job of showing uh, a cohesion being being built which yeah for hopefully for D and D parties <laughs> in general that is that is what happens a, a cohesion a sort of uh, you know uh, love love it but as a DM it sometimes feels like you're shepherding a group of super powered sociopaths <laughs> yeah yep for sure for sure uh, um. Yeah, I do like how they got to the big one of the big uh, stories rather quickly, um, which was cool because now it feels like oh something's happening, stakes, <laughs> and which is also comes with more char character character depth. It's like oh that's what's up with this one. I see. Got it. So it's kind of it's kind of cool because you got like uh, like a little bit of mystery kind of built in, hoping for Craghammer to be oh I don't remember Craghammer man uh, I was <laughs> yeah got to be make it concise I I that was so long ago I don't even remember Craghammer like some of it I don't know it was very very long ago I seem I seem to remember some of it. Like a door that they couldn't unlock, which I think they they just kind of took from that and put into this, because that I think wasn't that Craghammer. That wasn't Taldore. That was, or no, Taldore? Is it Taldore? Yes, tel no, it wasn't Taldore. That was Craghammer. But they just took it off of that and put it there. I think, if I'm remembering correctly, and I'm probably completely wrong. That is like the one thing I remember <laughs> from the very early days. And I might be misremembering it. So, yeah. Already see this being a three season show. With, yeah, feature film? Probably? Hell yeah. Um, with all the animation, like the intro animation? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Final Fight Arc? Yeah, that would be great. With more celebrity. One, one very in specific celebrity guest for the final arc. <laughs> we all know who he is. You get uh, Will Friedle in there. Mary Ellen's already there. She's already the 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 the, uh, the voiceover uh, director. <laughs> Mary Ellen's already in there. She's probably also doing a few voices that I have not noticed. Let's see. But yeah, I gotta say the the the, the cast that they got. Um, for to do the voices is pretty bonkers. Um, impressive, most impressive. Uh, uh, you know, if you get Steven Root, if you get Steven Root, then you're doing something right. <laughs> Steven Root is one of my favorite character slash voice actors. Slash act, <laughs> just in general. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. They got friggin', friggin'. Uh... Why am I blanking on his name? Oh, I'm not gonna get it, so I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Doc, they got Doctor Who, one of the Doctor Who's. Love how non-specific D and D it is. But I'm mildly concerned how it'll affect the genre. Going, yeah, at the start, Matt Mercer was just a, a good DM, but now people will expect this level of work. Yeah, and it's already hard enough to make things interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's already. It's I mean, it's already for people who who watch the 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 show, like the stream. 
um, they that's what they expect. If getting into D and D, they're like, oh, it's got to be this voices and, and intrigue and layers of, of narrative and yeah. Sometimes it's just a dungeon crawl, man. <laughs> sometimes it's a dungeon crawl, and your and your GM doesn't do voices. And you know, it, it's up to it's up to you guys to to move it forward. I run into this sometimes with my home game. I like sometimes I feel like they're just showing up for me to talk about stuff, and I'm I they <laughs> they they don't really they they're not contributing to the narrative as much as they should. I feel um, some of them like. I feel like I'll say something. It's like okay, you guys can do it. And then there's like a full minute of just nothing, just silence, like little, little, literally silence, silence. Like, uh, did you guys hear me? Hello. I mean, it is over like roll twenty in Discord, so there's that extra layer of okay, are they dis- are they distracted? Are they not? Are they doing something else? Are they playing a game <laughs> that's not this game? Um, so you know that's you got that got to add that on onto there. But yeah, it's. <sighs> People, uh, I don't know. People are going to expect more to be driven more by the GM when in that show is that's not the sh- like the all of the all of the players they all do their part to like Matt doesn't write their like monologues or their dialogue they do it they all the ca- like the players they all interact with each other on another level so it's. <sighs> It's tough. It's tough because they're gonna they're gonna come into it like, all right, it's gonna be like watching the show, but also I'm playing. Well, it could be if you get the right DM and you also are a good enough player, like the players on the show. <laughs> sure, you could probably get that experience or some 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 you know fraction thereof. Um, but it's really up to the group. It's all all the groups are different. D and D is different for for different people. It's it's not always the same thing. Some people just want a dungeon crawl where you don't have to. There's no NPC interaction. You just kick in the door, fight the monsters, uh, do whatever. Uh, great, fine. Some people love just just NPC interaction, just role playing, very little fighting, if any. Some people love that, uh, and fine, great. That's D and D to some people. Uh, and yeah, it, it all depends, and, and maybe it all depends on, on your mood. Like, sometimes I just want a dungeon crawl. <laughs> sometimes I will. I really want character building and NPC interaction, and all that fun stuff. Um, I don't get to play often, but <laughs> when I do play, it it all depends. I mean, I like I like doing uh, I like doing voices. So I, when I play, I do voices. Um, when I run, I do voices. Um, and I guess, uh, I, I don't expect, I don't expect GMs that run for me to do that. Because I know that's, a, that's like a, it's a very specific level of insanity that you have to have <laughs> to, to do voices for all the NPCs and, and, you know, all that fun stuff. But it's... Yeah, it, it all depends on, on on what I'm feeling like. Like, sometimes the dungeon crawl is just fine. Like, I don't... Especially if it's, like, a, a one-shot, then dungeon crawl uh, has the potential to be a thing to revisit or just leave, you know? It's like, okay, we did this, one, this once. You, you got through most of the dungeon. Great. Two of you died, or none of you died, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> We don't have to come back to this. Or if you guys want to come back to this, you can we can add more levels to the dungeon, and you guys can keep going. Fun times. Whoops! Whoops! There we go. Aha! All right. Wow. We're getting ooh missed a bit. Missed a little bit here. We're going to have to fill this in here. Uh, right about there-ish. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Cool. I don't want to... At a certain point, it's nothing but treetops, right? 
I don't want to just make it all all treetops. You got to have some of this some of this poking through for texture and you know variation. But uh, I'm just trying to get rid of these these hard harsh edges. And there's more than one way to do it. I can use this, which we've done before, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. So, and it takes a long time. <laughs> a very long time. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try to get through. Must, can I get this down to one? Yeah, there we go. And I just need to get to these three that they're in my eye line. I just need these three, <laughs> these three elements, and we're good. There. Right about there, and another one over here, and another one over here. Cool. Um, another uh, another show I watched on Amazon Prime. We'll we'll stick with that as our topic. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Uh, I watched a Wheel of Time uh, recently, somewhat recently. Uh, when it came out, we watched. The wife and I. The wife and I. We watched. Uh, uh, we watched them as they were released. I th think. Did they all release them at once, or was it episodic? Was it week by week? Well, either either way, we, we watched the whole thing, and uh, it was okay. It was pretty good. Um, I'm not, unfamiliar with the books, so I had, I was going in completely completely blind. Never read a never read a single Wheel, Wheel of Time book. Um, I, I I've seen my fair share. I worked in. <laughs> worked in a library, so uh, uh, I believe at the time that they were be they were somewhat being released. I think it was rather sporadic, but there was like one or two released while I was working in the library, and I remember seeing them. Um, and of course, the ones that were already released. Um, but uh, never read them. Um, and e even so, I, I think it was. Uh, they did a they did, did they did a good enough job of making it interesting without having to know everything, and even so, they they did drop some some lore, uh, but not so much that it was like, well, I'd com come completely lost kind of thing, <laughs> which uh, yeah, and it's it's kind of the thing you can enjoy without knowing everything, like like Lord of the Rings, like the Lord of the Rings movies, you don't have to know everything going in. You can just enjoy them. It's just like, oh, cool. Things are happening. I don't know why. <laughs> Especially for the first movie. It, you don't need to know. And, like, there's enough happen... There's, an, there's not a whole lot happening that's that needs a whole lot of explanation, I don't think. Like, uh, like, the Balrog and all that. It's like, oh, what's that? It's like, it's a really bad monster. Oh, cool. <laughs> they gotta run. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, and uh, in the minds of more, like in the minds and everything, is like, oh well, what happened? Like, well, obviously something very bad happened here. They don't need to go very much in depth. Or the whole thing with Gollum is like, oh, what's wrong with him? Well, he has this this ring, and it's making him crazy. As you can see, it's starting to make <laughs> it's starting to make everyone around them around the ring crazy. Um, which I think, which I think was good for like the first, the first movie. I I mean the first movie I think I liked more than the other two, just because it starts to get a little further away from that sort of that sort of uh, tact where there's now there was there was then more that you had to know to kind of follow a little bit better. You could still follow, but it was still like, oh, you still had to kind of do the kind of, well, I guess, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on, but okay, if they say so. Um, but by that point, you're invested, right? You're like, oh, I saw the first one. Oh, I'm just gonna watch the second one too. Um, but yeah, like the like the ghost, like the ghost warriors is like, well, what the heck are these? Things? And the the uh, the warriors with that are, were riding the elephants and all that fun stuff is like, well, who are these people? I have no idea. 
I mean, if you were paying attention, sure, you might have heard them talk about them once. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's those people. It's like, but if you're not really, you know, if you're just watching the pretty colors and stuff, you just <laughs> like all of a sudden there's these weird uh, these barbarians riding elephants and and shiz, and you're like, okay, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm in. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. This is going to be... I think I'm going to put a couple trees over here. In this area. Like actual trees. Like the trees over here. But I'm going to put them... Like maybe just a cluster of them up here on this edge. Um, possibly. Yeah. And maybe here and there in other places up here, but uh, so I'm just gonna try and wrap around doing this, <laughs> placing these trees, these little tree tops. And we'll see how far we get today. Gotta keep an eye. Remember to keep an eye on the clock for my ad breaks. <laughs> It's, I can very easily just kind of like zone out and completely skip a commercial break, which is much easier to do here than it is for you know playing playing a game, an actual game that's constantly changing your fo your focus. I mean, of course, you get when if you get to a point where you're like really, really like, oh god, what's going on? Um, then it's easy to. Lose foot, lose a uh, track of time. But with this, it's just like complete immersion, <laughs> total focus on one thing, hyper focus on one thing. So time becomes essentially non-existent. A much less. Concern, a lesser concern. All right. Um, we're we gonna do this bit. Kind of tall. Do we want to do this? Just move. Ooh. In this corner. Ooh, actually, yeah, kind of works. Right up to there, about or a little bit. There we go. Cool. Okie dokie. Okay. I still have to check um, Tails uh, Tails Tavern because uh, Tails Bazaar. I don't know what is going on with that, but I still can't sign into Tails Bazaar. But Tails Tavern, um, I'm gonna have to see if I can find. Uh, I'll just have to take a look through, like in between this stream and the next one, uh, and see if there's like anything I can borrow, <laughs> kind of make this a little quicker, maybe. <laughs> Maybe they have uh, something I can use. Um, I think for this bit, I'm actually going to use these little muddy parts just for like over here. Just to even out these very, very shallow uh, ledges here. We'll use the mud. The mud bits. <clears throat> but yeah, I do have to find the like a like a skull made of made of arranged this out of stones to see if maybe they've got that. It's a very specific thing, but hey, maybe they got it. I'd like to build, build it myself. I mean, even if I find it, I'll just see how they made it and just kind of make my own. I don't want to just copy-paste it. It feels very, it'd feel very cheap. I 
And by make my own, I would, I mean, make it my way. <laughs> see who, see how they did it, and do it, you know, maybe change it, definitely change a few things up. Alright, we'll leave, we'll leave a few edges here and there. We don't need to, yeah, we don't need to cover up everything. Um... But in my uh, my home campaign, my, that we are we are wrapping up, um, they are uh, they're at the point where they uh, they are on trial for releasing Jareth from the labyrinth, and yes, literally releasing Jim Henson's Goblin King from the labyrinth. Um, definitely a different story. Uh, behind Jareth and everything, and the labyrinth is what it is, but it was it was very similar, but much more deadly <laughs> of a labyrinth in, in, in their experience and how I how I presented it. Um, and the goblins, quote-unquote, were Spriggans. The third edition Spriggan. Redcaps, essentially. Um... Which, yeah, third edition Spriggans were just gnomes that were warped by Fomorian magic, which is kind of how I, I kept it. It was they were red caps that were they're basically gnomes captured by Fomorians that were turned into evil, evil things, um, and uh, that uh, sort of was a very overreaching arc, especially since one of the characters was a warlock. Uh, or is a warlock, I should say, that it has J Jareth as his patron. So, there was definitely an investment there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I mean, it w there was definitely the high chance that they would release him. Uh, ooh, whoa, whoa. There we go. And dun, 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 dun. But uh, yeah, as I said, we're like we're wrapping things up. They they already did the trial, um, where they kind of were kind of presented to the high ranking or high archfey of each of the uh, the fey courts or most of the fey courts. The, the four seasonal ones, and then there was the iron court that made an appearance. <laughs> um, and that was fun coming up with the different representatives for the different courts. Like some of them were like. Like Givens, like Mab is the you know the the Winter Court Queen Mab, uh, then uh, Titania for summer, Oberon for spring. Uh, Autumn is weird because there's not a whole lot uh, of lore for what Fey is like the ranking you know high arch Fey of the Autumn Court. So, but there was an old. Uh, Dragon Magazine, is it's either Dragon or Dungeon Magazine, that touches on a fey entity called the Bramble Queen, which I love. So I was like, all right, Bramble Queen. She is the high archfey of the Autumn Court. And I found like a a, a, a third party uh, publication thing for fifth edition about the, the archfey and the Feywild. Um, and they, they mentioned the Pumpkin King. And I was like, oh, that's just too perfect. <laughs> so I, I did my version of the Pumpkin King. Um, which was essentially like, uh, if you've watched Fraggle Rock, it's basically like the garbage mound, except it's got pumpkins on it. It's just a bunch of crawling vines that has jack-o'-lanterns sprouting from its head, the, its head area, and it has a big giant skull mushed into the top of the, of the, uh, pile of vines and, and dead leaves and stuff. But yeah, that's the Pumpkin King. He's, he's a nightmare. And then I pulled, uh, a classic, uh, not a classic, but a, a, a pre-existing... Uh, NPC from another 5th edition module. Uh, just flipping through, I was just look, flipping through um, fey creatures in like the, just, you know, D&D Beyond and seeing who would pop up as a high level thing and Smiler the Defiler who was in, I think I forget what it is but it's it's some like Nine Hells adventure I can't remember the name of it, but yeah he's, he's flat out crazy and I, 
I put him in, and he is like essentially just insane. Um, so and he's a he's a member. He's not really a an archfey of the fake court. I mean, he is kind of an archfey, but he's more of like a jester, kind of like uh, Cicero from from uh, from Skyrim. Um, from that <laughs> that game we're not playing today. He's kind of like Cicero, but more insane. If you could if you could picture that. And it's really fun doing his voice. <laughs> I was like, oh, I gotta do this guy. And it creeps my players out every time. <laughs> it was like that immediate, okay, we, we're not gonna talk to this guy. It's like, oh, but he really wants to talk to you. But uh, the way it's sort of boiling down with the trial, I know everyone's really interested. The way everything's boiling down with the trial, uh, they yeah they were presented to um, the members of the fake board, um, some of which were already kind of on their side with everything that happened. Like the spring Oberon and the spring court were kind of like, eh, why did this? Why why are we here? <laughs> um, everyone else was kind of like, all right, this seems like something we should do. The winter court and the summer court were like, okay, uh, why are we even talking? Kill them. Uh, or trap them or do some punishment. No trial, right to punishment. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, yeah, so we had one on their side, two against them, very much so. One very neutral, that was the Iron Court, and that was someone coming up with members for the Iron Court. Um, and one neutral ish, but they didn't like Jareth, and that was the Autumn Court. They don't care what the PCs did, they just don't like Jareth. There's a grudge there, so that was interesting. Um, but it all played out pretty well, and it was it was a lot of RP. That was that was a lot of RP over two whole sessions of nothing but RP, <laughs> just talking it out. And it had like uh, what we, what we would say witnesses, but the way the fake court does it, it's um, jury. Well, no, not jury. Judges come in. And a ju the judges are the members of the, the, the you know, the Fae. So, Fae creatures from either the material plane that they've interacted with the PCs or members of the Fae Wild who are directly or indirectly affected by what the PCs' actions, that kind of thing. They come in and they're sit seated at the front of the, the courtroom, kind of like a judge, but also like a witness. Um, but they are they are considered judges because they are judging the PCs' actions and giving their... Uh, what they think should happen, or what you know, you know, their opinion as to what should what action should be taken after they give their statement or whatever, which is very was very weird. <laughs> it was like Phoenix right, but like wrong. Phoenix wrong. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it was just like I had to like go like scour my mind for all of the. All of the uh, fey creatures, or you know, prominent fey creatures that they've come across in their in their adventures in the past, and be like, okay, I guess uh, this one's gonna show up. Uh, this one's probably gonna show up. Um, the fun one was Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga showed up because they they did interact with Baba Yaga, <laughs> and uh, that's never good. Never good. You don't want that. Um, oh, which reminds me, I gotta do a thing, um, <laughs> for next week. Um, I don't know how, how ominous that is, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> it might be, it might be pretty ominous. Foreboding, at the mention of Baba Yaga, reminds the DM to do something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, they left it, uh, they man the PCs, they managed to do enough RP, uh, leading up to the trial, uh, to kind of sway some of the courts in their favor, one of the courts in their favor, the Iron Court, which was neutral, they kind of like, well, they, not, in, in not so many words, words, they bribed them, <laughs> they bribed the Iron Court, um, which consists of the Great Gark, who is a hobgoblin fae, which is odd. 
of course. But they do mention him in uh, the the Moonshay Isles backdrop. Um, I made him much more of a a, a toned down, very um, I don't know, uh, more much more mellow, not not so much uh, out for blood. But he is considered he is called the Goblin King. He is the Goblin King. He's the king of the goblins. Um, somehow. <laughs> And he's also in, a, in the Fae Court. Because there is the, the goblin realm in the Feywild. There are Feywild goblins. Uh, actual Feywild goblins. So, and this is a fourth edition thing, I believe. But uh, but I kept it. Um, and he took he took umbrage with Jareth being called the Goblin King. When he is the actual Goblin King. And Jareth never claimed the title Goblin King. That was kind of thrust upon him. by, And it was kind of a... a, a a term of derision or a term, you know, um, uh, like a, just like a nasty nickname, uh, that, uh, kind of stuck. Um, and he, he was like, well, I'm not gonna, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll own it. I mean, but I, no, I didn't actually name myself the, Go the Goblin King, but if you're gonna call me the Goblin King, I'll own it. <laughs> Which the Great Gark doesn't like. Um, but, you know, given the choice, Jareth wouldn't be called the Goblin King. He's like, oh, you know, if you want it, you can have it. But uh, Jareth, um, I mean, and, yeah, the reason he was the Goblin King is because he gave shelter, kind of, to all these Spriggans that uh, the Fomorians had transformed and give, gave them a place to kind of exist in the labyrinth that was kind of... Uh, away from other people so they couldn't really hurt people in the material plane or in the Feywild um, but still, you know be able to exist and, you know, run around the labyrinth you know, causing havoc on other things in the labyrinth or whatever um so that was his whole thing is how he got to be called the Goblin King um in my, in my narrative <laughs> In my in this in this in my campaign, um, so he uh, he was imprisoned in the labyrinth. That's the whole. He, he, it's not his creation. He's not he's not in control. Even he has some control of the labyrinth. He can't leave it. Essentially, he has control over you know how the labyrinth does stuff and you know things inside the labyrinth and things like that. So to that extent, he is in control, but he cannot leave he couldn't leave that was the that was the main thing it's a it's basically a gilded cage it's 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 fancy it's it's got quirks it's uh it's great if you're in control of it but you can't leave <laughs> he couldn't leave it um so yeah when the pcs freed him uh it was kind of uh it was it was breaking the uh it did a couple things. It was a, it was a slap in the face of the, the fake courts that went to all this trouble to imprison Jareth, and then, on top of that, uh, in the process of freeing him, they welched on a uh, what you call it, uh, fey bargain, which is a no no, the big no no. So. Uh, that just a lot of a lot of bad things going on there. <laughs> so they're not only on on trial for that, but um, one of them, the one who actually made the bargain, is also sort of on trial for breaking that that fey bargain, which was with a hag. He made this fey bargain with a hag, uh, and it broke it. Indirectly, well, no, not just indirectly, but broke it in the process of freeing Jareth from the labyrinth, which was a whole other thing that was bad. So, just uh, compounding infractions. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, it was fun coming up with the Cinder Queen from the Iron Court, who was basically. Something I pulled from Magic the Gathering, the Gathering, which I think also exists. So you have 
Dryad, which is a tree spirit. You have Nyad, which is a water spirit. And then Oread, which is a fire spirit. So she's a fey fire spirit, a high fey fire spirit, uh, or lava spirit, or whatever. Um, so yeah, she's a member of the Iron Court, um, along with the Great Garg, who is the actual goblin king. <laughs> uh, a hobgoblin. Um, and uh, yeah, they basically bribed the... Uh, I mean, the Cinder Queen was completely, completely neutral. She was just like, whatever. <laughs> Why do I have to be here kind of thing. Uh, I guess it was like one of those glad to be included because they're, they're one of the courts that gets looked over a, a lot. Um, and there's there's like a couple more like fake courts that just didn't show up or didn't really want to show up for whatever reason. Um, so, and yeah, I mean, it's like the court of... Court of Clouds is the court of... Uh, oh, God. Court of... There's the Water Court. I can't remember what, the, what it's called. Court of... Uh, Court of uh, sneaky ass fish? No. The <laughs> um, but yeah, there's like one for for winged elves, one for sea elves, one for um, star elves, um, which are the the lesser, much lesser known ones that came out in third edition. Um, but they really didn't have any kind of, you know, they they wasn't this, these these events didn't really affect them, so they didn't really care. Not that they didn't get the invitation. Well, they maybe didn't. Maybe they didn't get the invitation. I, I hadn't really decided. Um, it's likely that they were just just ignored because it didn't didn't really uh, pertain to them. But uh, yeah, it's also entirely likely that they were invited but said, "Nah, whatever. I don't want to sit in court for however long and deal with these other archfey that I don't like." <laughs> <laughs> That's probably another big part of it. It's like, uh, I really don't like X or Y, and I, if I go to this, I'm going to be seeing them, so I'm not going to go. That kind of thing. Boop. And rotate and boop. Cool. Well, we're coming along pretty good. Any any little areas that I kind of miss or overlook with this, I'm probably going to hit with the mud. Um, There's mud tiles. Um, like in here, maybe. Maybe. Or I'll just leave it. Or I'll retrofit it for something else. <laughs> and, and leave the texture. Um, we'll see. But we are coming up on our first ad break, but that's a couple minutes yet. So yeah, right now my home campaign, they are in between hearings. So they got they have two weeks to kind of like go and do whatever the heck they want. Tie up any loose ends that they've come across in the campaign over the course of however many years. And uh, it's, it's looking like I'm going to have to make a map for Honorok. <laughs> Or somehow get them get them to honor off because there's a there's a character arc that we didn't really touch on much because it was a character that came in toward the end. It was a, it was a new character. One of the players wanted to swap pivot, change characters, which is completely understandable because the character that they had been playing was converted from fourth edition to fifth edition, and that does not always translate the way you want. Uh, I will I'll go so far as to say that seldom translates the way you want. <laughs> So uh, I'm probably going to be doing some Roll20 <laughs> map making in the near future for an Honorok kind of thing and coming up with uh, some more beasties and baddies. Um, it seems like that's what they want to do. I'll have to ask them on Discord, find out what exactly they want to do so I can plan accordingly. Because there's other things that they want to do as well. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Um, and, you know, as with pretty much every campaign I run, 
I mean, and I should probably stop doing this. I use uh, <laughs> I use Fallcrest as the starting the starting town. It's just I know I know that town in and out. I know that village in and out by this point. It is ingrained in my DNA. I mean, I have the the character interactions, the NPC uh, interactions, all that fun stuff. It's all it's all embedded in my in my brain, and it's not going anywhere. All right, I gotta get this really steep edge taken care of here. And probably gonna have to do it using multiple tree tops. Bang. Alright, cool. There it is. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure. They're going to... I don't know. It, it depends, because I, I know... Every, they've already rolled characters for their the next campaign. And I know at least a couple of them are itching to play their new characters. <laughs> Which I have to come up with a, a starting thing for that as well. Um, and I, I promise this time I'm not going to do Fallcrest. Fallcrest is not, is not a thing. Um, I, I've decided I'm going to be using my homebrew campaign that I'm using for my the, the paid game that I'm currently running. That's sort of also giving me the opportunity, that paid game is also giving me the opportunity to flush it out. So that's cool. So I'm like going through with the paid game and flushing things out and then, oh, okay, so now I have this more solidified thing to, to run um, uh, any other time. So that's, that's very beneficial. Um, I really would love, I would love it. I would love to be able to, and I would have to do this from the start, right? I would love to be able to run the whole thing in Tailspire to just, like, um, broadcast it to them through Discord. Like, I'll, I'll control all the minis and stuff. They don't have to worry about it. They can tell me where they want to go. And I'll move them, which is a lot of work on my part because now I'm also moving stuff and DMing and all. Of it, but, <laughs> but I I think it would be I think it would be beneficial because then they only have to have Discord. They don't have to have Roll Twenty. They can use D and D Beyond if they want. It's fine. Um, uh. And I mean, if they still want to roll, they, they, when we play on Discord, they roll physical dice on their end, which is fine. They don't like digital dice. They're burned by the digital dice. If they're fudging rolls, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm having faith in them and trusting that they're not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I would love to just be able to do it in here. But... I would like it even better if they had the custom mini thing rolling. If that was all, if that was all, if that was going on, if they already had that going, then I would be much more inclined. Then I would I would go out of my way to make sure that I could. I would I would actually be like, look, guys, I really want to do this. <laughs> I think it would be better. We can make m maps easier on the fly. Um, my God, I forgot how 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 easy it is to just make maps on the fly in here. This, again, this kind of map building in Tailspire is just being overly <laughs> overly uh, you know uh, anal retentive. Uh, it's I mean, and this map by no means is super detailed. It's it's a you know it's okay. It's it's we we still have to kind of we still could. I don't say we don't have to. We still could go through. And put more detail in the interior rooms, like cobwebs and things like that. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of rubble here and there. We could 100% do that. We're not going to, because <laughs> I want to go on to the next map. Um, but yeah, oh, uh, it's time for our first ad break. 
Uh, let's go ahead and do that, and when we come back, we'll play more uh, Tailspire. Let me go ahead and do this first. Boom. And uh, BRB. Stay tuned. Yo! How's it going? We are uh, up to our elbows <laughs> in, uh, in Tailspire. And uh, we are continuing to build the map that we started ages ago, uh, the Tomb of Horrors. Um, classic D&D module S1. Uh, I still have, still have the thing, breaking things. Like, and it's, it's once again, great, works great with my green screen because it is a green module. So it makes me invisible. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, module S1. Classic uh, advanced D&D. Advanced. I have advanced D&D. &D. The doctor says I have fun. <laughs> oh, God. That was, a that was a terrible joke. I'm sorry. Anyway, we were talking about uh, campaigns. Or I was talking about my campaign. <laughs> campaigns. Um, but I think, yeah, I gotta do... I gotta come up with a, a st good starter. Uh, level one. Because they're starting at level one. A lot of people like to start like level five and things like that which i'm good with too i mean especially if it's the one shot start you know starting at level one is kind of eh, you know you want you want to be able to do stuff and for a one shot it feels like well i'm not really doing anything <laughs> but for especially in fifth edition and especially for these players who most of them have only ever played 5e with a character starting out at level 12 that's that's not that's not great um i would love to start level one have them experience the character building growth you know planning out their character things like that reading the the, the source books getting you know being informed <laughs> more so than me i i try to but like putting things together is just kind of like i i don't i don't do that often i don't try to min max um, I, I, especially when it comes to characters, because I hardly ever get to play. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I want them to get the experience of, of the, the true experience, in my opinion. The true experience. Playing from level one. And, and, you know, really, really getting in there. Getting attached to the character. From level one. And playing the game. Getting to know how it works. That's that's my goal for this campaign, which seems odd. <laughs> Most of the time, you're like, oh, I want to, I want to get a good story. I want to, like, no, I want to educate my players on character, on character development, and the importance of looking up how your character and understanding how your character works. That is my goal. And I want to I want to do it in my home campaign, and I have to decide. I think I've decided about where it's going to start. I'm thinking I want to run uh, Rhyme of the Os uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Um, but I have to come up with a settlement that far enough. I think I have one. It's from it's from Fourth Edition, Winterhaven. If I set it in Winterhaven, and just kind of flesh it out so it's got surrounding towns too, like ten towns. Um, <laughs> Forgotten Realm. If I do that, I think I think I can do it. I think I think I can pull it off. Um, if not, we'll just have to create a new area <laughs> that is essentially ten towns from Forgotten Realm. Um, Icewind Dale. Essentially Icewind Dale from, from Forgotten Realm. Because um, I, I love Forgotten Realms, but I don't I don't want to keep running in that because that's what that's what they are that's what they're playing now. They're, but my home game is set in the Forgotten Realms. It's in the Moonshade Isles area because I I'm a sucker for areas that don't get a whole lot of focus. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, being half half Irish, 
<laughs> it's, you know, like, oh, well, of course. So I, I do really want to run Rhyme of the, uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, I just think it's a really cool thing. And it'll be nice to be back on a module. Because for that, for my home campaign, I'm off module. <laughs> the last one I ran was the modified um, Red Hand of Doom from 3.5. They finished that. They they beat Tiamat. They beat uh, Azarkul, the, the high priest. Um, and all that fun stuff. So that's we're, we are off module. It's completely up to them. They're, they're choosing the way. I'm going to have to do this this weird uh, Honorok Desert mini mini quest for them. Uh, it, I'm probably going to have to frame it like a one-shot, kind of build it like a one-shot um, with repercussions because, of course, <laughs> it's going to affect the, whatever they do because they still have to go back for the second hearing to uh, to Seraphal, to uh, um, Carador. Um, and uh, they still have to... Uh, do whatever the, whatever the other PCs want to do, because um, that's one one PC wants to look into it, and I'm sure the other ones want to help and do and also you know look into it because it's it's a helping out their friend and PC and or friend PC and B um, something to do. <laughs> uh, so I might just do it, just to do it, and then. Uh, then we'll decide later. You know what? You know what would be fun is if I build the maps in Tailspire and try this try this out and just try the building the the the, the we have the desert tiles. We can do it. We have desert tiles. We can easily we can easily do it. Um, do we have the monsters we need? And this might be I hope I know my players don't watch this. So <laughs> it's yeah. Um, I'm in no tr I'm in no danger of them uh, being spoiled on anything. Uh, constructs, no. Demonic. You still only have the, the imp? Come on. Come on, Tailspire. Dragon folk, sure. Dwarves, okay. Um, yeah, I can get away with some of those. Uh, no, there is one in particular. One creature in particular. But I don't think they have it. Mm, ooh. Etten. Forgot they had the Etten. Gnomes. Goblin. They did just add the red cap I saw. Where is he? He's not in gnomes, obviously. Somewhere else. Goblin, half demon. Ooh, okay. Ooh, some of those actually could help. Or could work. Half orc, halfling, human. Wide array of humans. Okay. Humanoid. We got the. Warforged like creatures. One furbolg. <laughs> Some gnolls. Okay. I like how gnoll is the subcategory. They have one, two kobolds, kenku, one lizard folk, a kutoa, minotaur. Minotaur could work. Minotaur could work. Okay. So minotaur is an option. Monstrous. What do we got in here? We have the Shambling Mound, Chimera, Dragon. Ooh, is this a new dragon? What is this? Oh, it is a new dragon. Oh, that's new. We got a green dragon. Oh, this is a, ooh, this is a, a Drake or a Wyvern kind of dragon. It's only got, it's the Skyrim equivalent of dragon. Two legs, two wings. When dragon, in my opinion, is more four legs, two wings. <laughs> and we, yeah, uh, make it, oh, that's a big dragon, whoa, hold on, maybe that's too big, go here, alright, so that's, a, that's the same base size as this one, so this one can actually go one size up, <laughs> that size, bam, cool, that's pretty dope, all right. Well, that's not what we're looking for. So, the, so far the Minotaur seems good. Harpies, cool. I think that's new. Uh, we've got Kutoa, some Mimics. All right. Orcs, three Orcs, great. Undead, we've got the animated armor. That's really cool. Uh, Lich, what's new? What is this? 
the elf elf zombie. Looks like it. One thing I saw that they added to uh, to Tailspire is the knockdown status for the uh, for the tokens, which is really cool. <laughs> So now you can tell if your PC, uh, if your if your ally is uh, up or not. Also, um, you can you can use markers here for base for uh, like status kind of. Um, I don't think they have any real status markers. Uh, they have stats, stats, but they have no status. Attack, attack. Uh, okay, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Emote. They have twirl, wiggle, surprise, still. They have your torch on and off. You can hide it. Um, yeah, flying, kill. Uh, yeah, and you can adjust what stat. Oh, wow. They have eight stats now. Wow. Cool. You only really need three for D&D, maybe four. And it would be great if it wasn't just number slash number, if you could put, I don't know, something else. Huh. There, oh, that's a slidey thing. Never noticed that. Cool. It's a little wonky, but... Whoa. All right. Oh, I see. Minus 11 to get back to 10. Hey, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while since I've been in, uh, in Tailspire. I'm just kind of looking around, planning things out for my other thing. <laughs> so Minotaur, it's looking, it's looking like, is the one that is going to help me with what I need. Um, and I just, uh, oops, I'm just going to have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's doable. All right. I'm going to, and it'll really, it'll help me too, because I need to get into Tailspire a little bit. Get back into Tailspire a little bit. It's been a, it's been a little bit, a little while. All right. Back to this. Enough, enough, uh, hyperbole. I don't even know if that's right. It's not, it's not, no. <laughs> So yeah, I think uh, I think for the next thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, just to keep my interest and probably the PC's interest, and hopefully it'll because I know some of my players um, have issues with world twenty. Like some maps just kind of like wreck their stuff. So I think I don't know if I don't know if broadcasting through Discord is gonna be much better. Maybe it will be because they're still they're already just running Discord, so it might just be. Because then they're just using one program instead of having Roll20 and Discord. It's just Discord. Um, we'll see. I, I'll, I'll see if I can get reach out to one of my players and see if we can test it out in the interim before before next Friday. Which which is great because if I can get him to help, then I know it'll work because he's the one that has the most trouble with with Roll20. This is coming along. Um, I have a feeling that we might be able to finish this today if I stop getting sidetracked. <laughs> to be fair, I only got sidetracked just recently. Just, just, just this one time. Um, oh, this guy. Uh, but I did, I did get to play D and D last week with uh, with Z and Elliot. If you guys are familiar with uh, the Z's. Z Bashu and his D&D streams. Uh, we played uh, we played a little one shot uh, that Elliot ran for us, and uh, Puffin Forest joined us, who I've never met before. But he he joined us and and we played and uh, uh, cool guy and we uh, played played a little one shot. It was fun, fun times. And I might uh, might be playing another one shot tomorrow if they have one. Hopefully. Uh, I was unable to during the week. There were a couple. He was like, "I feel bad because he messaged me. He messaged me. He was like, hey, we 'Hey, we're gonna be playing 
uh, some games tonight. I'm like, oh man, I cannot. I, it was Thursday night, so it was my my Zelda stream, so I couldn't. Um, and I got the feeling he was like, yeah, he's gonna say yes. And I said, I'm free on Sunday. And he was just like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh man, because apparently he lined up some other. He he lined up um, Forrest from Stabby Quest and also Jay from Jay's really good D and D show. Uh, feel bad. I couldn't. I couldn't join. I had my stream. <laughs> but um, but I got to play with uh, with Elliot and Z and uh, and, and Puffin Forrest. So that was that was fun. And uh, maybe if we have one on Sunday, we'll see. We'll see how it how it shakes out. Tomorrow. Um, but yes, we used we used a little bit of Tailspire for that as well, um, uh, which is it's just it's just so great for just like one shot stuff because you can like if you don't need a big expansive map of things you can just build a down in a quick and dirty uh, room for a combat map right that's all you need and that's like what we did what we had to do what we did we had okay we need this guy we need uh, a room about this big with a door. And a little bit of area outside the room, and you're done. Easy. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's great, it's great. And I, I'm I'm pumped to kind of implement, try and hopefully Im implement this with my home group for this this one shot, this little one shot part of the ca their campaign, wrapping things up. Because I get the feeling that they're gonna want to do this, so I got to come up with. Something. <laughs> uh, I don't. Not only do I have to map it, I do have to come up with something. I mean, I have the the nuts and bolts of it. I just have to put it together in a way that makes it an, it, it an adventure. You know, <laughs> I have the why. I need the how. I'll probably look and see if. Uh, I don't even know. I guess I want to search if there are one shots based on the subject matter, not so much the location. I can always, I can always sub out the look at like it doesn't have to be set in a desert. It's just it has to be similar subject matter <laughs> that I can swap some things out. I'm like oh hey there we go, and uh, and the, the the setting is just like okay it's just this instead of that, and maybe change a few things. You know, based on that. All right. So we are around the back side of this mound. Whew. Okay, it's not too far away, but we have all of this in the middle to do. Oh boy. <laughs> we'll get to it. We will get to it gonna feel real good once we're done. <laughs> mm, there. Yeah, it's fine. Alright. <laughs> My paid game that I'm running currently um, we are on, uh, we're not on module, we're on a, on a, uh, it's a, it's a, an adventure from an old, uh, dragon magazine, um, or dungeon, dungeon magazine. Uh, I always think it's funny, and I always mix them up, so, dungeon magazine is for DM, dragon magazine is for everybody, players and GM. I mean, players could read dungeon magazine, but they would risk spoiling themselves of any potential adventures that their DM would run for them. That's why I say it's for DMs and not players. <laughs> but uh, it's an old, uh, it's an old adventure from a dungeon magazine from the late '90s, so it's still second edition. Um, and it was cool because the cover art was was is, was a Brom cover art, and uh, that, that's what prompted me to buy the issue. And I was like, oh, it's Brom, it's awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when I knew Brom from Magic the Gathering illustrations, like the weird shit, like uh, like Morphine and uh, all the thralls that look really weird. Yeah, that's a that's going way back. 
Oh wait, that was Anson Maddox. Who? He never did. I'm thinking of someone completely different. That was Anson Maddox who did Morphine. Brom did... Oh, Brom... No, that's RK Post. <laughs> Brom never did any Magic the Gathering cards. Who am I thinking of? I was thinking of Anson Maddox. Never mind. Um, Dark Sun. He did a bunch of Dark Sun. That's what I... That's what I knew. But, uh... Yeah, I, I I got that really when I was eighteen. I would have been eighteen at the time it came out, I think. So, uh, a youngin. And uh, it had some cool it had some cool adventures in it. One of which I also ran a sub another. Uh, there, there were two. This is the second adventure in that issue that I run for this group. Uh, <laughs> Because I'd always wanted to run the first one that, that I ran for them, which ended up being kind of brutal. Um, because I, I think I talked about this before on stream. It was in, in a dead magic zone, like the main dungeon. So they couldn't cast any spells. And healing potions didn't. So, yeah. Pretty brutal. Um... And uh, there was a lot of, uh, a little bit of error on my part in uh, in keeping track of the number of of baddies in it because it was it was two levels and I just couldn't keep track I didn't for whatever reason I d couldn't keep track of the number of tokens for the bad guys and uh, <laughs> I had to retcon some stuff like oh wait there's not that many of these sorry um, which happens it happened um. But yeah, that adventure was pretty brutal, but I'd always wanted to run it, and uh, now I have a map for it in Roll20, um, which unfortunately is only going to be on that, in that game. I, I, I didn't realize it, but you can't transport maps in Roll20. Once it's in, uh, in, a, in a campaign, it's in that campaign, and you can't copy and paste it into other campaigns. You can recreate it, but it's going to take at least as long. Well, it might take a little bit less time. Now, after you've built it once, you probably might take a little bit less time, but uh, I don't want to rebuild it. <laughs> just want to copy and paste, which is great. The great thing about Tailspire, you can just go, oh, hey, check the slab and just copy paste it. Hey, there it is. It's it's there. Hey, Eltazimi, what's up? Uh, yeah, we're back in Tailspire this week. Um, welcome. We're, uh, we're, we're re revisiting and finishing up the Tomb of Horrors, uh, the exterior, <laughs> which is just nothing but trees. It's trees, trees, trees. Which we are using as hillside foliage. Oops. Let me bring it up a little bit. There we go. And we're talking D&D, basically. <laughs> building, building a tailspire, talking D and D, like you do. Tomb of Verdant Horrors, exactly. Verdant Catacombs. Oh, Magic the Gathering bomb drop there. Man, Verdant Catacombs. <laughs> Tap to search your sacrifice. Search your library for a swamp or a forest. Put it on the battlefield. You shuffle your library. <laughs> no one plays Magic the Gathering. Like, what the hell are you talking about? All right. Let's see. Do this one here-ish, and then multiverse is now playing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there we go. Like planeswalkers, if they really wanted to get that whole thing in there, that would just be what spelljammer. If they really wanted to to mesh it together. Just, just go whole hog. Just, just make all Magic: The Gathering stuff canon and Spelljammer, and you're fine. There you go. Easily done. Good. There we 
we go. Uh, but yeah, for my uh, my paid game that I'm currently running, uh, they recently the Spelljammer stuff coming to 5e. I heard rumors, but don't remember if it was hope or based on actual fact. I think there were some. I think it was like a mixture of hope with some, uh, some some like screenshots that maybe someone leaked or supposedly got leaked um, about Spelljammer or or potential potentiality there, but I. I'm not sure. I don't think it was ever... I don't think it was ever, like, confirmed or not. But I think it would be cool. And I don't think it would take a whole lot of work. Because <laughs> Spelljammer was, like, mostly... There was a lot of second edition content. And then you can just take that and, you know, turn a few knobs and, hey, fifth edition. Done. <laughs> That's, like, most, most second edition stuff. And even some third edition stuff is just like, all right, just take this, change it to this, take all these pluses and bonuses pluses and negatives, change it to advantage and disadvantage. There you go. Pretty much done. Um, but yeah, my, my my paid game that I'm running there, I, the adventure I'm running for them is pretty neat. It's, I'm, I have, I have, yeah, I have all the maps built in Roll20 and uh, it's, uh, it's really interesting because it's, it's essentially a, it's just your classic dungeon um, it's kind of a death, death trap dungeon. Um, I'm going in and making my own little additions to it. One of which they got they got passed last week, but I wasn't salty about it. I was really hyped for it too. I was like, "Oh, that could be so bad." Okay, bear with me. <laughs> mirror of life trapping or mirror of life trapping, right? That's a you. You look in the mirror. If you fail your save, you're trapped in the mirror. The mirror has 12 cells in it. But while you're in the mirror, you don't age, you don't need to eat, drink, sleep, anything. Um, and the 12 cells are just independent. One, the, peop, the, thing, the creatures trapped in the mirror don't interact with each other. They're each in their own little mini pocket dimension. So, but if the mirror is full and someone gets trapped, it looks in the mirror and gets trapped in it, one person in one of the random 12 cells is swapped out for the person that just gets put in the mirror. So I thought, let's put a mirror of life trapping that is full <laughs> of vampires. <laughs> full of vampire spawns in the room so that if the player goes up, looks in the mirror, they get swapped out. All of a sudden, a, a vampire is in their spot. And <laughs> there's that moment of what? <laughs> and they have to fight a vampire all the while wondering what happened to their friend. Uh, and in the worst case, another player walks up, looks in the mirror, and then gets swapped out for a second vampire. <laughs> or, potentially, their, their ally. There is always a chance. It's random. So, that would be... Oh, oh. And if they break the mirror, if they break the mirror to release their friend, then all of the vampires come out too. <laughs> Ooh, oof! That would suck. I'm gonna. I'm definitely. I'm keeping that. That's gonna be a little nugget that I. Uh, no, no, no. This is a private game. Yeah, this is my my private game. I'm running for uh, for uh, a customer, so to speak. Who's a friend? But uh, they they wanted me to run a game for them, and they're like, "I'll pay monthly." I'm like, "All right, <laughs> sure." <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. Um, but yes, you feel free to use that if you are a GM. Mirror of life trapping full of vampires, which is doubly ironic because the vampires don't actually cast a reflection. So they're just like, huh, a mirror. Oh, where am I? <laughs> oh, man. And the, the owner of this dungeon, it's a castle. Uh, the owner of this, this castle dungeon area thing is a lich. So he's had 500 years to to collect 12 vampires in this mirror. <laughs> Got it down to a science at a certain point. Oh, man. Great. I, it was like a moment of clarity. I was like, wait, what if? <laughs> That's just mean, too. It's like, well, now if you're down to one person and you're fighting two vampires, you now probably know something's up with this mirror. I don't have the time 
to, you know, figure it out, I'm going to spend an action to attack the mirror and probably break it. It only has like 11 hit points and an armor class at 10. So, depending on the type of character, it's, it's I mean, it's very unlikely that they'll be unable to break it. And then they free their friends, yes, but also <laughs> 10 more vampires. Oof. I don't know if this has been done before. It sounds like it's something that could have been done before, but I, f I feel very clever having thought of this <laughs> last week. I was like, ooh. But uh, they managed to, the first the first person that came up to it, uh, his character uh, made the save. Uh, and luckily he has advantage against spell spell uh, spells and spell-like abilities. You know, uh, yeah, things like that. Uh, magic attacks, that kind of thing. Advantage, so he made a save, luckily. And he was like, okay, stay away from the mirror. And I was like, oh. Oh well, moving on. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. The thing's freaking out. There we go. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, the, the, the castle is full of stuff like that. Um, they had to fight. I added Helmed Horrors because I loved Helmed Horrors. You know, armor. Hey, it's just armor. Oh, it's trying to kill us. What if the person also looks into... What if that person also looks into the mirror? Sounds like my players would just go, Well, not going to fight the vampires on my own. <laughs> I'm following the... Yeah, so if they... Oh, sorry. If all three of them just look in the mirror, then they're just trapped. <laughs> then, that's, then that's very bad. And there are three vampires in the world. Um, maybe the vampires know that they're friends that they, maybe the vampires were captured you know in a group and the vampires are like well i know that my vampire allies are in the mirror i'm gonna break the mirror and now and then and then they just have to fight a bunch of vampires <laughs> so there are ways around the tpk there potential potential tpk and and the players would have learned a valuable lesson <laughs> hopefully hopefully or you could base an adventure on them trying to escape the 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 foggy gray void in which they now in which they now live and no longer have to eat or sleep or or somehow down the line it's a great like time travel if you need to do like a time travel thing cuz they don't age and they don't need to eat or sleep so they could be in there for freaking ever and when they're finally released it's however many years in the future Yeah, Mirror of Life Trapping is actually kind of neat. <laughs> Legolas, what do you have? I see. <laughs> it's gray. Let's see. There is a fell voice on this wind. Is that what he says? Something like that, right? Whoa! Tree is freaking out. Alright, there we go. <laughs> they're they're taking the hobbits to Isengard soundtrack. Isengard dot soundtrack. <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, Alright, we're gonna do this little thing here. This tiny peek. Get it done while we're over here. Uh, there we go. Um, how about that? There we go. Here and another one over here. And I don't know if I mentioned this before. I think I have. Um, that my my paid game, they this adventure I'm running, I didn't notice it at the time, but amongst the treasure that you can get, uh, includes a deck of many things. And they found it. 
they found it. Um, and they have so far drawn two cards. Uh, the first card they drew was Skull. So that player had to fight a, an avatar of death. Uh, one of the other characters decided, I'm going to help. Then they got their own avatar of death to fight. And then there they stopped. They're like, okay, don't help us. Don't help each other. <laughs> Just fight your own death. Um, and they, they pulled through. They didn't die, luckily. Uh, so that was fun. And then uh, another character decided to draw a card and got Ruin. Or no, Talents. So all of their magic items turned to dust. <laughs> Which was horrible. So yeah, so far they've uh, not had a whole lot of fun with uh, the deck. It's uh, been mostly bad. <laughs> but that's two bad cards out of the deck. They're no longer in the deck. So... Odds are the next card they draw is going to be good. But who knows? But then once they draw the good cards, then they're going to be like, oh, I want to draw the card. So I don't want them I don't want them to draw cards. Every time they're like, I should, I'm going to draw a card. I'm gonna, I, I just say, as your GM, I highly advise against it. <laughs> this deck was not my idea. I mean, ultimately, it was my idea. I could have made the I just could have, I could have made the decision. Uh, okay, it's not a deck of many things. It's a deck of several things or whatever. Whatever that other one is. But no. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Let's do it. Maximum effort. Jump off the overpass. Ugh. Alright. See, this one's a little difficult, because now we got to do layers. Just have an inscription at the bottom. Draw at user's discretion. <laughs> Little asterisk. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that one loves to just freak out before I hit clipping. It's just like, yeah! Um, and it's great. Uh, <laughs> it's great running because uh, that the castle that they're in, the castle... It's a dungeon, but the castle, it's, it's a castle. The castle they're in has a bunch of uh, germ lane, uh, which are little gremlins, and I get to use this voice. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> what? Which is great. Um, and they, they, germ lane are so weird. You always, it's, because most of the party, all the, all, the entire party has dark vision, and germ lane are underdark creatures that they are invisible to dark vision. So if they are if you're trying to observe them using dark vision, they're invisible. So you have to have a light source of some kind, which makes it great because if you're in a dark room and they're attacking you, they have advantage. They don't do a whole lot of damage. They just, you know, they have like a dart attack and I think a club attack. Um, but they get extra damage if they have, there are germ other germline germline, however you pronounce it, within 5 feet of them, the one attacking. So you can do, like, really fun, like, swarm attacks and things like that. And the things where they have, they use the blow dart, but a really nasty poison on it, which I did. <laughs> Luckily, oh no, he, he, he failed his poison. Sorry, I got up. Ha! Uh, uh, they're still susceptible to fairy fire. Yes, they are. So yeah, if you do cast fairy fire on them, they are still visible, which they did do. They the first time they encountered them, they uh, fairy fired them. Half of them made it, half of them failed their save. So <laughs> you should make them visible through dark vision. Yes. So if you fair if they are fairy fired, then they are visible through dark through dark vision. So yeah, fairy fire states that they can't they lose invisibility and cannot gain invisibility. So but yeah, uh, but. Uh, yeah, it's a, it was a fun thing. They did use Fairy Fire uh, the first time they encountered them. Which, uh, I mean, if still if they make their save, they're still <laughs> they're still invisible. That's the one thing about Fairy Fire. It's it's great, but it's not uh, it's not foolproof. Um, but yeah, the germ lane were fun, uh, and there's like there's hundreds of them too. So <laughs> they've killed a couple dozen, maybe. Like 24, so that's maybe a, a fifth of them that they've killed. <laughs> oh, and there's still there's still a bunch. Um, 
And there's a there was a fun a fun th a fun uh, a fun monster I got to build, which is called the Germline Tank, which is a suit of armor that has a bunch of clockwork stuff in it that the Germline are piloting like <laughs> like a freaking Ava or a Mech, and it's it it fires uh, out of its chest it fires vials of alchemist fire. So the chest the breastplate opens up and a vial of a alchemist fire gets flung out of it. Oh my god! And it's just operated by like. 12 germline just 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 operating it and of course the arms swing for attack so it's basically animated armor with extra steps <laughs> just give it a slightly uh, a, a, you know the alchemist fire ranged attack and uh, maybe a couple things like it loses functionality at certain hit point things like if it's at a qu three quarters hit points it can't fire its chest thing or if it's at a half hit points it loses its arm, one of its attacks, or something like that. <laughs> Get in the Voltron. <laughs> exactly. Get in the Voltron, Shinji. But yeah, that was that was a fun one to make. Um, another great one um, that was really fun to do, and actually kind of easy, uh, was a Skeleton Juggernaut. Uh, so at one point... There's a balcony, and then once, once they get to it, uh, there's a, a giant statue of the uh, Baron who used to own this, or you know, live in the castle, uh, in full armor. Uh, it's a clay statue of the Baron in full armor with a sword and a lot of fun stuff. Um, but it's actually encasing a giant skeleton that once they get close enough to it, uh, it explodes out of the clay, uh, but keeps. Uh, like some of it encased on it so that it has a better armor class but it's blind <laughs> so it's, it's got its head covered um, but it has blind sight and it basically has three pummeling attacks it has resistance to slashing and piercing even if it's magical but it's vulnerable to uh, bludgeoning uh, all bludgeoning damage and uh, it gets three pummel attacks and if it hits it's a lot of damage and it can choose to knock them prone or push them 10 feet? 10 feet or 5 feet. Um, so it's pretty nasty, but there's only one of them. And uh, its speed is kind of cruddy. It's only 15. And uh, yeah, it loses... It lost... What did it lose? There's a thing I took away from your standard skeleton. It wasn't turn resistance. It still has turn resistance. Um... I forget. I'll have to look it. I have to look it up to, to figure it out. But anyway, that was a fun one to make because it's that's it's in the module, and I had to you know figure out what would be the best. I, and I looked at giant skeleton, and that was close, but uh, I, I wanted it to have a little extra flavor. Uh, let's do this. There we go. Trying to get this. Maybe it's easier if I build down, and then I can just fill in, fill in the spots that need it after the fact. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. This is rotating really weird. Okay, there we go. And down. And there. Okay. of these edges open just because like that okay and down here there we go Yeah. 
Yeah, once we finish with this, I'm not sure what we're going to do next. Um, I have had a request for the Caves of Chaos, which we might do. Um, it seems like it could be something fun. Relatively simple, but also quick. I think it's going to be... It won't be too... Um, uh, what's the word? It'll be very mono monotone, I guess, is the easiest way for me to describe it. Because it's all just going to be the caves. Um, which we do have the new... We have the stalactites and stalagmites now. Um, we also have uh, icicles. They've added icicles to the thing, so I don't know if there are any icy cave areas in there, but if there are, we have that option now. Um, but that should... Uh, it should be pretty quick, too, I think, because it, we're not varying our, our tiles a whole lot, so it's not a whole lot of clicking off and then clicking in, like, oh, where's this one? It's all going to be one thing. So I think just tear through that, make the Caves of Chaos. I think it's pretty extensive, so uh, <laughs> it will be interesting. So for right now, I think that's the plan, is to do the Caves of Chaos. Um... Just to kind of kind of harken back to uh, keep on the Borderlands, it's uh, the other half of that is the Caves of Chaos, and then that way uh, those they'll both be up on Tales Bazaar. We'll have er, Tales Tavern. Sorry, I'm on Tales Tavern. Uh, you'll have uh, the the keep and the caves all all ready to go, so you can run that adventure uh, on Tailspire. Ooh. So yeah, that's that's the direction I'm leaning right now. I believe I have a map. I think the map actually comes with the uh, Keep on the Borderlands module. There is a Caves of Chaos map in there. So pretty sure I have the map. So I think we're okay. For source. <laughs> Because they've redid, they've redid the whole thing in 4th edition, I know for a fact. I don't remember if they did anything in 5th with it. Uh, Alright, so... Ooh, this is a nice flat area here. I'm probably going to put more tree, more actual trees in this area here. And muddy it up a bit. So I don't need to do a whole lot of... A whole lot of this, aside from around these uh, steeper inclines. There we go. There. Maybe one or two right here along the edge. Just to kind of connect things. Time to get in the mushroom. Sorry. Um, okay. Whoop! Well, I guess I could put it here because this isn't actually... Where my mic stand is sitting, it's sitting on my adjacent desk. It's clamped to my the desk perpendicular to my computer desk, so as to create maximum work. Mm -hmm. All right, so oh oh, we've come full circle. We we made it back around to the area that we we started last uh, last time we streamed Tailspire. So we've we've done one complete circuit around this top bit. Hooray! <laughs> well, almost. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're we're almost there. Um, cool. I mean, it's literally moments, moments, but mere moments. These right here. Oh, this makes sense. Oh, 
Actually, there. Good. And then we can put one of these right there. And how about another one right there? And how about another one there-ish? <clears throat> uh, oh, you kind of, well, kind of skipped a small sections here and there. I mean, this is, this is, it's not, it's probably up a little bit there. Here. Sure. We don't want it to be uniformly foliaged. Uh, we do want variation. Which is why we're going out of the way. Uh, of do, uh, out of our way to do this. Because... Uh, we want it to look bespoke, artisanal. Uh, we want it to look uh, a little bit more uh, intricate, I guess is the, the word. Realistic, varied, textured. Oh, actually that was just about what we wanted. Right there. Okay. Yeah, some of these flatter areas we can just ignore. Not not really mess with much. Um It's just these like steeper steeper parts like like here and here. Um what are the ones we I'm like, yeah, up here. We're definitely gonna have to go up there, but it'll be a much a much smaller circuit to go around. And we did this little peak here, so that helps. <laughs> and I gotta say, for being away from Tailspire for as long as I've been, the, the controls still feel pretty, pretty good. Um... Pretty intuitive. Um, I kind of, kind of like fell right back into it. There were a few, like, I, like before I started streaming, I was, I hopped on and and just checked the map to make sure everything was okay. And there were a, a few of the of the the tiles that were invisible for no reason. <laughs> like, I noticed a gap in the in the hillside, and I was like, why is why is there a gap there? And I went into like the the build mode, and they were the tiles were showing up, but they had like that red that red outline on them, which means they're invisible, oddly. So I, uh, I had to figure out how to fix that, which I did eventually. Um, but it uh, really was kind of like a, okay, <laughs> remembering how to do things in Tailspire. One thing I thought about, so I don't. The one thing I I do kind of like with Roll Twenty is the ability for you to upload your own sounds to the sound your soundboard. 
Um, and they have an okay library. You can find some things sometimes. <laughs> but uh, most of the time, in my experience, you, I, it, it comes up empty. Um, or you find something, but there's like music with it when all you want is really just the sound effect. Uh, that happens a lot. Um, but you don't get that with Palespire. You kind of have to work it out through a different thing. Which, if I do end up running this this next bit for my uh, home campaign all on Tailspire, this one shot, uh, I will have to plan accordingly for that. Because I have my stream deck and voice mod, and I can load some stuff in, in there and use that, which I guess is fine. But, uh, yeah, it was like that. Anyway, uh, second ad break right now. Uh, we're going to do that, and when we come back, more Tailspire. Uh, let me do this once again in this fashion. There we go. Uh, we're going to mute this and uh, we're going to go on break. Uh, be right back pretty soon. Hi, <laughs> we're back. Uh, it didn't want to, it didn't want to give up the music like it likes, to, like it doesn't like to do. Um, However you want to phrase that. Anyway, we're uh, we're back. Um, we're gonna finish up uh, this this portion of flocking <laughs> the the tomb of horrors, which is essentially what this is really what that feels this feels like. I'm just flocking it. It's all this all this uh, texture we're just applying to the hillside here. go maybe a little maybe one a onesie I bought her cool let's do a twosie here and normally I would like I would like to do uh, a same the same duration of stream for tailspire as Skyrim, just because I feel like I owe it to everybody, <laughs> and because I like Tailspire and I'd like to keep going. But this week I can't, unfortunately. Uh, I got errands and and evening plans, and the two the two are overlapping. So I need as much time as I can, as I can get after the stream to take care of some stuff. So. Um, uh, next week we will be playing Skyrim we're going to be trying our best to tear our way through a bunch of anniversary edition stuff um, and uh, just, uh, just try our damnedest <laughs> to close out uh, our, our stint on Skyrim uh, special edition on hard mode legendary hard mode it's been a it's been an experience. It's been a whole thing. <laughs> that sums up our experience quite nicely. Just that tree freaking out. That's that's a that's a big mood. That is a big mood for sure. Um Alright. We're just gonna get as far as we can with all these. Very angle here. There we go. All right. Um, I'm gonna take a step back and look at everything here. I'd say I'm happy with that. Ooh, this I gotta do something about. I gotta do something about that. All right. So. We're just gonna do something to this effect, and then just layer it. Like that. And that. And that. Aha! There we go. Cool. 
Works for me, man. Picking now little areas that I might have missed, which I really should do at the end. <laughs> but there we go. All right. <clears throat> Part seems fairly, fairly well blocked. Um. Little bits, little bits here and there, you can kind of touch up. Uh, all right, so uh, go in a little bit and uh, oops, keep it, keep it rolling, so to speak. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So I think if I maybe just pick a corner and then just work our way in for this for the next bit, like just not all corner, but pick 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 a quadrant and just work our way into the center. I think that that'll probably work out best for us. Instead of just going around, because we we tend to just default to this anyway. There are like big portions of this that I just kind of feel like I could just use one, this one top and just like do most of the work. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it varied so that it's not all one note. But, I mean, that's hard to, that's hard to do. It's hard to make it one note when you can overlap this and rotate it. It's going to look a little different each time you place it. Just trying to avoid too much repetition. Too much pattern.
just like clockwork, my one cat is using the litter box. <laughs> Shit. Which is six feet from me over there. And she is the cat that does not know how to cover her poops. And also the cat that has the stankiest poops. Somehow, they're sisters. Share DNA. But somehow, this one has far stinkier poops than her sister. <laughs> I know everyone will love this information everyone loves to know. <laughs> uh. It's I guess the added the added not knowing how to cover cover it. Because you can I don't know if the mic is picking it up. You can hear her falling at the side of the litter box, but not the actual litter itself. She doesn't she doesn't know how it works. I'm gonna get hit hit with a wave of cat poop. <laughs> uh, excuse me if I go and turn on my air purifier, because that might happen. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. <laughs> Are just the same? Yeah, okay. So it's not it's not isolated to to my poor dumb kitten. <laughs> Like, is this doing it? Is this working? Not. Hold on. Give me one second. Yes, I turned that on because of you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Air purifier on. Whew. I would say, I would ask, what do you eat? But I know what you eat. I feed you. <laughs> and they enjoy digging the litter really the side of the box at 2 a.m. Yep. Yep. I gotta swap out the box today. I'll swap it all out. We, we just, and I know this is uh, super interesting, we just switched from the uh, uh, non-clumping to clumping litter, and I think they, they got used to it pretty quickly. The first time we tried it, I don't think I laid down too much, too, uh, I, don't, I didn't lay down a thick enough layer of it. You're supposed to have a nice, like, three inch <laughs> like, layer of, of litter, uh, which you don't really need with the crystals. You can get away with a thinner one. Um, or just pl the plain crystals, because there's the clumping crystals, and then there's the, the crystal crystals, which are bigger. Um, so yeah. The good thing about the clumping is that we can just pour pour a box, just like pour a whole bag into the litter box, <laughs> and just let it let it go for it's good for like a week and a half as long as we scoop it regularly, um, and uh, and yeah, they've 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 acclimated to it. Luckily, yeah. The, the time that I put only down like a, an inch layer, that was bad. That was that was a poop disaster. <laughs> that was mostly my fault because I didn't I didn't you know properly. I was used to using. I was used to putting the other uh, the other litter in there, which you don't need as much. But uh, yeah. Uh, one of our carpets suffered <laughs> for, for my insolence, for my <laughs> idiocy, in my anger. Got clumping because the smell uh, and how far it goes. Yeah, it ends up being slightly cheaper too. Yeah, yeah. Just the the, the number of times you need to swap it out is reduced when it's like it's like half a week for the non-clumping at least in my experience and it's like a week or more 
for plumping. You can, as long as you scoop it. You gotta, you gotta be vigilant on the scooping. and throw one of these down right here because I have a feeling I'm going to have to use this to kind of close that distance. But yeah. And kind of shore that up here with more of this. Whoops. There. Probably gonna have to do the same thing here. Um, do one like that and one like that. And then take this. Actually, you know what? It's probably better for this one. Or, mm, or not. Uh, oh, actually, let's do this. We'll do one here like that. And then rotate it and put on um, up like uh, I am doing this here. That ish. And then just a one. Single single over here. Sure. That sort of works. And oh, this is perfect right here. Boom. Done. And there. And sure. Making serious progress. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel, or the the light at the top of the hill, or the 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 uh, light in the attic. Yeah, there it is, light in the attic. Freaking wizard smoke song on repeat. It's just you don't even notice it. I don't even notice it after a while. It's just like eh, okay. <laughs> it just has that that warm synth that that eighties warm synth that I associate with D and D for some reason. Hey, Amorphous Trousers! Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are we are finishing up our, uh, or trying to finish up Tomb of Horrors um, map. We're doing the exterior hillside. Um, getting real close. We're getting real close to, to wrapping it up. Um, if not this week, definitely uh, when we revisit Tale of Spire in two weeks, uh, we will most assuredly finish it then. And welcome. How, how are things?
Fair enough. Um, Alright, here we have kind of a hard ridge. Let's use the double. And. Yeah, we're gonna have to layer it. So I'm try and hide the tree trunk. I imagine the underside of this just looks like a nightmare. <laughs> I imagine it just looks like a hot mess. This is a bunch of just tree trunks poking through the bottom of this thing. Ah. But luckily, we'll never see it. And neither will anyone else. Because you, when you peel away the layers, they disappear. And you can't look up. Just like dogs. <laughs> dogs can look up, sir. Uh... But yeah, in Tailspire, you can't look up. You can look down and uh, to the horizon, but you can't look up. They might change that, but as of right now, you can't look up. Yeah, next week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm 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 pretty sure we're gonna have a long stream next week uh, instead of our no our, our now standard three hours. We're gonna be going for the extendo four hour stream next next week for Skyrim four hours, and then the following week, unless something comes up, the extendo stream for Tailspire four hours. Um, so we'll definitely be getting this done and potentially starting our next map, which will be fun. And the next map I'm thinking, I mentioned earlier, I'm thinking Caves of Chaos. We're going to kind of kind of uh, revisit um, Keep on the Borderlands, but we're doing the other face of that coin, which is Caves of Chaos. Because um, I have had a request for it, oddly. Uh, never thought I would get a request to do. <laughs> you know, they offered to pay too. I was like, no, nah. I didn't answer. I feel I feel bad. I didn't answer, but um, I was like, I'll just do it. It's fine. I'm not gonna. I don't want to, because I that feels weird. Uh, like get, getting paid to, to use this to make a thing, because it's like I I didn't make Tailspire. I mean. <laughs> I'm just building with it. I guess if you look at it as a tool, then maybe. But even then, I mean, I'm not a pro at this. I'm I'm okay at it. I'm 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 passable. I I'm I know how to use the program. <laughs> if you can say if you can say nothing else, you can say I know how to use the program. That's it. Um, which yeah, it's fine. Uh, but I don't. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to get paid for for making maps in here. This is this is it because I didn't make I didn't 3D model the, the, anything in here. I didn't make the program anything like that. Like even like making maps in uh, in Roll Twenty. That's that's iffy too because you can't even trade them. You can't even. I mean that's not even a thing. <laughs> you can't even export. I mean I guess maybe you can export them if you screenshot, but then no. It's not even going to be a high enough quality if you screenshot it. So, yeah, we're just going to do Caves of Chaos. And after a time, we'll, we'll, we'll stream it, and, you know, eventually it'll be available on Tales Tavern. Just as this will eventually, <clears throat> sooner and much sooner, be available on Tales Tavern. Area, the area that we are uh, 
needing to cover is diminishing. Which is good. Alright, well, I think that quadrant is done. <laughs> Except for the trees and mud that we're going to put over here. Um, so let's let's just rotate, and this this is gonna take no time at all. If I shut my mouth and do it, <laughs> this looks like a nightmare project. How long have you been at it? Uh, ooh, how many episodes was this one? This one, I can look it up real quick. Hold on, let me let me see. Uh, <laughs> let me go to my channel here. Uh huh. And playlists. And. Uh, Tailspire. And. Aha! So, uh. 14 weeks. <laughs> of, like, 3 hour streams. Plus, uh, what we've done today. <laughs> so, 14 times 3, that's 42. Um, 42 hours? Yeah, unless we did longer ones, in which case, it's the right, at least, it's at least 42 hours. We'll put it that way, because some of the streams might have been four-hour streams. There was a point where we pivoted from four to three, four hours to three hours, just because, you know, I got a job, <laughs> and am now tired <laughs> most of the time. Less so than, you know, when I previously had a job, since it is. It's work from home, so uh, it's there's no commute. Uh, it is much more laid back than my previous job, and uh, yeah. Whereas before, when I was laid off during during major quarantine, the quarantine era, I call it an era because I'm not a hundred percent sure how many years it was. <laughs> That's the quarantine time. Uh, the oh. I have no idea how long it was. I think it was a year and a half I was out of a job. Maybe two years. A year and a half sounds right. Um, I, can't, I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, well, during that time, I was just like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll spend five hours streaming. I'm, I am nothing else going on. <laughs> I didn't do anything yesterday. All I did was sleep. Ugh. It seems like, it seems like heaven. And at first it was. It gets old real quick. It gets old real quick. Alright. Uh, that's good there. Do that. Maybe shim a dish. Uh, yeah. And yeah, this is just the, the hillside encompassing the the tomb. The tomb is down there. Uh, let's see. Yep. Up, up, up. Cut away a bunch of it. Up. Is that like right in the middle? Oh, yeah, we are right in the middle. All right, so yeah. There's the tomb of horrors. All the, all the bits and bobs and everything. It's all down there. Ready to kill any PC. <laughs> any and all PCs. Ready to just destroy them. There we go. I have I've I've built this up, I think, above their intended ceiling of the build space. <laughs> Where our our measure our little pointers are like right at the tippy top. But if we actually go to where so if we go down and then scroll up, we can only go up this high. This high. This is as high as we can go with the measurement provided to us. In order to get up higher, we have to zoom out and then double right-click to the top. And now we're beyond <laughs> what was provided for us. Ugh. And we, uh, this is where we're building right now. We're, we've got nowhere else to go but up. We, we are touching, we are, are touching, our map is touching the base of the, the, the playmat. 
of our build space, and it is extending up beyond what is provided. So, uh, it's big. <laughs> it's a big map. You would think overgrown would be an easy uh, paste option instead of fudging trees into the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it is what it is right now with Tailspire. I, I imagine there's going to be more functionality built in down the line. Um, I mean, I can hope. Uh, I think I was watching an older older video that I, or an older stream, and I was talking about something that they might include, and I can't remember what it was, but. Uh, no, they never, they never did. <laughs> uh, what was it? It was some... Oh, I can't remember what it was. Oh, uh, importing images into, into here, which you can't do. And I don't think they're going to do it. But I'm still waiting on bated breath for the custom mini thing. As soon as that goes live through, what do they do? Is it Hero Forge that they're working with? Um, is it Hero Forge or Eldritch Foundry? One of those two. Wh whichever one. As soon as I have, then I'm going to be, my wallet's going to suffer because I have so many, <laughs> so many custom minis that I want to, I would make. And I would just like, I would, then I would almost insist on running things in here. Even if my players don't have it, I'll just stream it to them on Discord. It's like, here, this is, this is the map. Uh, which might create some problems. I'd have to really, really uh, try not to create uh, things that only I can see. And I think there's like, oh, didn't they do filters recently? I have to look into that. They have a, a new feature, filters, where you can make some things visible but other things not. And it's it's it works for both the GM and like whoever's looking at it. It, it looks the same. So. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I don't know if it's a live feature or something that they they spoiled or are working on, but I know they have the um, the fog of war thing, which was which was interesting and not uh, and still very much in uh, R and D. <laughs> it was a, a very uh, I, I would say that that feature is still in alpha, while the rest of this is still in beta. <laughs> while the rest of while the rest of this is in beta. Um, yeah, it felt very blocky. Literally, it was a very blocky kind of thing. Uh, put that to there. And... There we go. Uh, huh. Do I want to leave that or do I want to soften that up? I guess I could do this. Rotate it a little bit. There we go. Awesome. Uh, oh, uh, we've been watching more, uh, or not more, but we went back and we're, we are re-watching Daredevil on Netflix because they, it was either Netflix or Marvel, they did a weird like poll or, or, or tweet or something where they asked, what is, what is your favorite Netflix Marvel character or something like that? Um, and... It got everyone like, oh, does that mean they're gaming it or they're they bringing it back? Because it sucks it got canceled on Netflix. I mean, it went for, what, three seasons? Which is fine. It just... Well, I don't know. After The Defenders, is there really anything else to do? I forget where Defenders left off. But... It was sort of... They sort of closed the arc, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. But uh, Daredevil was my favorite. Just because... I mean, the casting is... Amazing. It was just amazingly well done. Charlie Cox is amazing as Daredevil. Deborah Ann Wall, I love her. She, I love her. I mean, I, I just love her. And she's a, she's a great GM too. If you haven't seen it, watch her D and D, uh, not streams. Uh, it's they're all up on YouTube. I forget what they're called. I feel really bad, but look up Deborah I, Deborah Ann Wall D and D on YouTube. Amazing. She is an amazing GM. Uh, but yes, I, th that show is, is great. And freaking Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin is amazing. 
so well done. His kingpin is perfect. And spoilers, uh, if you haven't seen Hawkeye on Disney, spoilers. All right, ready? Earmuffs, if you, earmuffs if you haven't seen it. The episode where he walked in, <laughs> like my wife and I, we literally cheered because we were like, oh, because that has bigger implications, right? They're keeping the Netflix stuff canon. It's canon, which is amazing, which I think is great. And if they bring back Charlie Cox as Daredevil, I'll be even more surprised, more extreme. And also for me, I have not seen the latest Spider-Man, so please don't spoil that for me. <laughs> I heard there's something else to that effect in the latest Spider-Man, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I have not seen it. I, I plan on seeing it soon, hopefully. Um, hopefully before the mask mandate is dropped uh, or whatever they're, whatever they're talking about doing. Um, or loosened or less or whatever. Uh, and if it comes down to it, we'll probably try and rent out a whole theater for just me and our friends. Me, uh, me and the wife and our friends uh, probably end up being about 25 bucks a head, which I, knowing my friends, they'd be like, yes, 100%, let's do it. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been watching that, and uh, even the casting for Punisher I thought was great. Um, he did a great job. I know everyone Everyone poo-poos uh, Iron Fist, and uh, I mean, I'm among them. I poo-poo it, too. <laughs> I didn't really care much for Iron Fist. Uh, it was okay. Uh, and then they made it really weird at the end. Like, really weird. Like, they, you could tell they weren't sure what they wanted to do with it, so they just kind of were like, okay, whatever. And I don't know if that's something that was canon in the comic? In the comics or what? But eh, eh, I don't know. It just seemed an odd choice on their part for Iron Fist. You know, I don't know. There were a lot of why. Like why? <laughs> they could have literally. They literally could have done. They could have done the right thing. And it, and it would have read completely fine. It would have... Like, why not? But no. And I guess they tried it. They made up for it with Shang-Chi. Um, which was a fine Marvel movie. It was fine. I, I don't know if I... I told the story of my first experience of watching Shang-Chi. I think... I'm pretty sure I told it on stream. But for those who missed it, I'll tell you. So, I went to see Shang-Chi. Uh, I don't smoke... Often, uh, but I went to see with my friend, and he was like, "Hey, you want to smoke before you go?" I'm like, "Nah, I've got nothing going on today." So, <laughs> literally in the parking lot, or the like, the the like, the, the the parking structure, we're like, "All right, let's just do it." And we did that, and then we went in, and I could already feel it kicking in as I was walking into the movie. So I was like, "All right, this is gonna, this is this isn't gonna be great." <laughs> Uh, so I, I come to the realization that I am showing my ticket. I'm looking for my ticket on the on my phone as I'm doing it. I, yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> and we go and try and find the theater. We walk all the way to the end of the theaters, the end of the row of, of you know theaters, and we're like, wait, where is it? And we look at the <laughs> we look at the thing. It's like, oh, it was literally the first one on the left. We did, yeah. Um, so already great. And uh, we get in the theater, it's like the 4DX experience thing, that nightmare thing where it's got the seats that rumble and like the fans and the fog and all that stuff. And oh my God. Uh, so that's another like little freak out thing. We're like, oh, why does this theater look different? And um, another thing we notice is that the floor is in incredibly sticky. <laughs> because... Uh, Rumbling seats and fountain drinks do not mix. <laughs> Apparently, uh, from the from the feel of it, uh, of our feet on the on the uh, the ground, um, the seats like to yeet the drinks out of the cup holders. Apparently, oh god, it was like a layer of just certain like soda syrup. Um, so the movie starts, anyway, we get to our seats, the movie starts. I come to the realization 
that there are a lot of previews. I'm like, why are there so many previews? When is the movie going to start? I see something with Rasputin, which was the Kingsman preview. That's all I retain is that Rasputin is dancing or something. <laughs> and that's the only preview. Oh, the Venom preview. I'm like, oh, is this a new Venom movie? Oh, I did not hear about this. Oh, my God. And then Aquafina's on the screen. And I'm like, oh, she's in the movie we're watching. And then the movie starts for me. <laughs> and it's more just stuff like that. And then during the whole thing, like the seat's rumbling, it's got this thing in the small of your back that just kind of does this. And I'm just like, okay. Like anytime there's like an action or a fight scene, it's that kind of thing happens. And it's just not a great experience. It's not, it does not enhance my experience <laughs> at all. Um, so I, I, and I start, I'm, like, I'm like in and out. <laughs> I'm like noticing things about the movie. And then I'm like spacing out, and then I'm like noticing things about the movie, and apparently when I'm when I'm high, I'm much more critical, and the things I do notice, I'm much more critical about. Um, so I came out of the movie like thinking it was bad. Like, like, oh no, is this a bad Marvel movie? Oh no, but it was fine. And uh, I watched it again, you know, at home without you know comfortable. Of, of, of sound mind and it was it was fine I didn't care a whole lot for Trevor um, they didn't in my opinion they didn't need another comic relief Aquafina was doing fine you didn't need a, a second comic relief they, they didn't need the Pokemon the the weird Pokemon things didn't need them uh, not necessary but you know it didn't pull away from the movie very much uh, they didn't focus on him too much, except for the one that was with Trevor, but that's the whole Trevor thing again. Uh, and the, Kev the what I call the Kevin horse. <laughs> when they first get to the, the, the concealed village or the, the, the area, um, and they, they, they see this weird dragon horse thing that has a human, it, human face, and they stop their car, and they, it, looks, it looks at them, and there's this, this very long pause where they don't do anything and it just looks at them and then they move on and the horse moves on and they, they, they pans back and you see there's more of these horses but it freaked me out <laughs> well the first time i saw it because they didn't say anything about it because it was weird and they played they just played it off like oh it's a horse and they didn't it's just like moving on i'm like what what about the weird horse <laughs> Oh god, that's still weird to me. I mean, the, the it was, uh, I don't know. I still, I still call it the Kevin horse, just because it's a name and he looks, it looks like a Kevin. But uh, yeah, watching it, <laughs> watching it straight was fine. It, it's, it's a fine Marvel. It's okay. It's not the best. It's, but it's not bad. Best way to put it. Uh, even Eternals. Eternals, I, I didn't even I didn't watch Eternals High. Oh, Eternals, I watched completely straight. Uh, Eternals was fine. I hear a lot of really, like, negative stuff about it. Eternals was fine. There's, uh, it was better than the TV series. That's for sure. Um, and they didn't... Did they feature any of the characters from the TV series? I don't think they did. Which leads me to believe that the series is still... Still canon. <laughs> it's like what happened in the series is the character the characters in the series are still the characters in the series. Um So yeah, I don't know. I thought it was fine. Angelina Jolie did great. Um and I was worried too cuz I was like, "Oh no, a big name." Cuz that's never what you want to really see. Like like the like a big. Like there are big names and then there are like monolithic names and Angelina Jolie is like a monolithic name kind of thing. And that's the kind of big problem that uh a lot of the older comic book movies had where they would just cast big names even if the casting was bad or didn't make sense make sense it's like oh well it, it this act this big actor kind of fits the fits this thing or fits this character at least a little bit let's 100 percent snap snap cast done uh kevin costner oh of course like why <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, oh, but he, oh, he was never in a comic book movie, was he? Is Kevin Costner in a comic book movie? I don't think he was. Um, I'm thinking more of like Robin Hood. It's like, that's, yeah, Robin, like, why Kevin Costner? I mean, 
don't get me wrong, <laughs> that movie is is a, a classic for for me and and my wife. My wife loves it, um, and for me, even though it doesn't, the casting doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> Especially since he doesn't have a British accent at all. He's not even trying. <laughs> not even trying. Oh. My God. But the, what makes that movie is Alan Rickman. Oh, my God. Alan Rickman and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. He is in his own movie. He is in, he is in the movie that Alan Rickman wants to be in. <laughs> and God bless him. He he brought it. He brought it a hundred and eighty-five percent. But yeah. Anyway, I digress. Eternals was fine. Um, I don't know what the big deal was. It was definitely had a different narrative. Uh, just I think because it was so many characters, um, they really couldn't do the same kind of storytelling that they had done with most other, most previous Marvel movies. They had to kind of make it more broad um, and really, they touched on the characters, of course, each in their own, their own time, um, a little. And just little bits here and there built out, you know, gave you an idea of what each character was about, which was fine. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what the big deal was. It's, it's okay. It's fine. And can I just say, Kumail got freaking ripped <laughs> for that role. Kumail Nanjani got freaking ripped. I'm used to him just being a computer nerd on Silicon Valley. <laughs> He got warped. I mean, that was kind of weird seeing. <laughs> I was just like, whoa! Alright. This side is almost done. And we are almost out of time here today, but that does not mean we are done with Tailspire. We are going to be back in two weeks for more Tailspire. Uh, <clears throat> we'll be wrapping up this map, and then starting, which I believe we've arrived, we've landed on, <laughs> the Caves of Chaos. And uh, for Caves of Chaos... We are uh, not only going to be doing the map, we're going to also be going in and doing the uh, monster. Because, why not? <laughs> you kind of need to, almost. Um, I think we have each faction, because it's, it's what? It's bugbears, goblins, hobgoblins, orcs, gnolls, kobolds? Just every, every, every basic uh, monster race in there, I think. I'll have to double check it. Um, but if not, we can always fudge. We can fudge where we want to fudge. Peanut butter fudge. <laughs> Makes no sense. That's not what we're talking about. Um, so yeah. Uh, this is coming along nicely. I don't feel... You know what? You know what? I don't want to jinx it. It's almost the end of the stream. We have not been booted off the server. At all. The game has not crashed. At all. <laughs> uh, Skyrim? Explain. <laughs> Please explain why you have so many issues every week. Every frickin' week. But I, I stream Tailspire and everything's fine. I mean, if it would be one thing, crash, game crash is fine. That's, you know, completely different game. It functions differently. Of course, Tailspire is not going to crash unless we try something immensely difficult or intricate or go out of our way to try to make it crash. Fine. But we are not booted from the server at all. <laughs> We're not even dropping frames. I don't, I don't get it. 
<laughs> oh, I thought you were referring to the uh, photon issue with Thalespire. Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, yeah, quick save, quick save. <laughs> it saves it as we go. It's fine. That's the great thing about Tailspire. It just it just saves as we go. I don't even think it has a, a quick save. Does it? No. No. Couldn't save it if I wanted to. It saves it. Uh, it saves it for me. Uh, but what is the photon issue with Tailspire? Photons, the service... Oh, they're using for online connectivity. Oh, okay. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I haven't had any issue. Of course, this is my... Uh... Oh, you can force save? Oh, okay. I think. Gotcha. Got it. There's probably a command for it. I'd have to look it up. Not a concern currently. I think we're I think we're good. It's it's behaving. It's been very it's been very well behaved. Uh oh, first time chat viewer, you can it's the up arrows next to the map name. Oh, okay, got it. So we go over to here and the up arrows next to the map. This one? No, not that one. Um, probably not this. <laughs> up, oh wait, up arrows next to the this one. Nope, that's rename. Uh, this one. Haha. -ha. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for the thank you for the inside tech. Uh, Orthus eighty Orthrus eighty eight, and welcome. <laughs> oh, thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. Uh, we will be back with uh, more Tailspire in two weeks. But if you want to tune in next week, you get to see me yell at Skyrim. <laughs> Old man yells at video game. Uh, that game. Why? Why is it such a pain in the ass? I don't understand. And I feel like it, I said this last time. Uh, I do love yelling at Skyrim. <laughs> Like, Anniversary Edition came out. I feel like it was unnecessary. Like, and I, I, it's my fault. I bought it. I paid for it. I was like, all right, I'll try it out. Uh, no. <laughs> for anyone out there who's playing Skyrim currently with mods, don't get Anniversary Edition unless you are 100% sure that you have mods that are not going to uh, conflict with the content you're buying. Uh, but it has fishing. You can get a fishing mod. A much better fishing mod, in my opinion, <laughs> than the one that they give you. Luckily, that one doesn't conflict with the, the new fishing mod. I have two fishing mods now. The one that they give you with Anniversary Edition and the one, my favorite one. Ugh. And it's free. That's the best. My favorite one was free. And I just went to, ne next to uh, Nexus Mods or whatever and found it. And was like, oh, install. Done. I can fish now. But uh yeah, don't don't get anniversary edition if you're running mods and you love your mod setup. I'll put it that way. If you really love what you have currently and you, everything's good and 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 everything's fine, great. Don't get anniversary edition. Go to the if you want some some hand pick, go to the creator club or whatever and just hand pick things. If it sounds like something you want, just get that thing, or those specific things, and and get them. It might cost more in the long run, but you'll save some sanity, <laughs> for sure. You will, you will. It'll give you peace of mind, and you won't have to scramble to either um, uh, uh, force uh, force back save the uh, your uh, your Skyrim uh, install or anything like that. It's, it's I mean. Our issue was, our big issues were our survival mod, and there was one other thing. I'm pretty sure, oh, it was, oh that was different, that was a completely different issue though. Um, yeah, it was basically just our survival mod um, that was giving us huge grief, 
and it was actually making it so that we could not load our game after after we bought, downloaded, and installed Anniversary Edition. So we had to uninstall it and then you know go through all the steps to uh, tweaking the survival mod that we got through Anniversary Edition, and that was a fun time. But uh, it is what it is. The, the the new survival mod's fine. It's not as uh, invasive or as harsh as the one I was using. Um, and it's actually kind of elegant how they worked it into uh, your your stats and everything. So, yeah, you know, I can complain about it, but in the end, it ended up being better. Uh, <laughs> but still, I feel like, and I said this last, uh, last week, actually, I feel like the anniversary edition kind of broke the, broke the camel's back. There was there's there was so much and it was at an okay place. The camel was still standing, and now it's it's at a point where it's too much. And specifically, and the the easiest way for me to illustrate this is the number of ingredients that you the new ingredients that all of the anniversary edition content is adding to the game. It's too much. <laughs> it's way too much, and there is easily multitudes of ways that you can make broken potions now um used to be you can make a couple um but as soon as you introduce an ingredient that gives you fortify alchemy you can just break the game because you can just fortify alchemy and then make better potions of fortify alchemy and then drink those and then make better potions to fortify alchemy and then drink those and make even better potions of fortify alchemy and drink those and then make potions of whatever and you're, you're invincible you you make potions of, of smithing that make your weapons one hit kills you make potions of enchanting that make enchantments that are just stupid and broken um, and it's super easy to do all you need is one one potion of Fortify Alchemy, and oh god! <laughs> and I think the fishing mod that I love has that. It has the option to make Fortify Alchemy. So, and it only adds like a handful of ingredients. It has a handful. There are <laughs> dozens of new ingredients in, uh, in all, this, all this Anniversary Edition content. So there's no way it's balanced. There's no way. There's no way that they took the time to cross-check each, each new thing that has new ingredients and make sure that there aren't ingredients that are the same thing that all you have to do is combine them at an alchemy table and you get a potion that does uh, everything that each ingredient does. <laughs> uh, which, which is a thing that you can get uh, pretty easily um, or that you can just break the game which to be fair I did break the game with alchemy but in a very understated way <laughs> infinite money isn't isn't so broken but it can be uh, I love that in games as far as I'm concerned they should lean into it and make in that ingredient super rare expensive because they know it will break exactly exactly but that's not really what we're... I mean, maybe it is. Because a lot of the new ingredients we're coming across... We're coming across a handful, and we don't... We're not coming across them in nature. Like, they're part of loot. They're not something that you can actively go out and farm. Uh, so maybe that's fine. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's fine. But... I don't know. It seems like, it seems like it's, it's just a lot of ingredients that don't need to be... <laughs> that just don't need to be a thing. All right, and that being said, uh, we'll experience some more of that next week with Skyrim, uh, but the following week, we're going to, look at that, the mound's done. Well, mostly done. We do, we're gonna add some trees over here. Oh, let me get my flashlight. We're gonna add some trees over here, and we're gonna also add some trees over at this end, maybe sporadically throughout, but not like a, not like a we're not gonna forest this thing. But um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, in two weeks, uh, more Tailspire. Uh, thanks everyone for stopping by. It means a lot. Uh, Morphous Trousers, El Tazimi, Soapy Wan Kenobi, Orthrus88. Uh, anyone else I missed who is maybe lurking, 
or uh, maybe a, I, I think that's everybody then. Yeah. All right. Uh, but we will uh, we'll be back next week, as I said, with some Skyrim. Um, we're going to just grind our way through some anniversary edition content. Get it done. Well, I'm going to try and look into the goblin thing because we we fought some goblins in Skyrim. Big surprise, goblins in Skyrim, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and uh, we're, I guess we'll try and look into that because that's definitely something added. And I know there's uh, apparently a whole little side quest for it. So I'll see what that is and we'll, we'll try to do that one first. Um, are we in the middle of one right now? I don't think we are. I think we're just sort of farting around between quests. We finished a bunch of stuff last week. I just edited the... Oh, and let me tell you. <laughs> Editing that thing was a pain in the ass. I also got mixed up on, on what episode we were on. I don't know if anyone noticed that on my Twitch channel. <laughs> I thought we were on episode 30. We're actually only on episode 29. Um, I had to rearrange my thumbnails and labeling and all that fun stuff. But that's another story. Anyway, next week is, is more Skyrim fun. Following week, uh, more Tailspire. So, uh, and then in the, in, in the interim, on Thursday evenings, I will we'll be streaming my Breath of the Wild, uh, Legend of Zelda streams. So that's fun where that game is just fun it's just fun it's a fun game uh i mean i i'm actually playing a i when i started the stream game i started a, a separate game on my switch under a different account just to play because once i'm done streaming and playing the game i'm like i want to play more legend of zelda breath of the wild so i i play under a different uh you know uh account on my switch and i'm already almost beat, beat the game i've already almost beat the game again <laughs> on that account um so yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, I, I like it a lot. So tune in Thursday. We're gonna we're gonna play more of that. Um, aside from that, if anyone's looking for a game of Dungeons and Dragons, this to play monthly, uh, I run uh, a game through Eventbrite. There it is on my overlay. I am Dice and Brews over at Eventbrite. Um, tickets are eight dollars that you purchase through Eventbrite. It gets you a seat at the virtual tabletop, which is run through Roll Twenty, um, and using D and D Beyond and Discord. Um, and yeah, and uh, it's a uh, dungeon crawl, so if you miss a month, you won't miss much story. It's just kick in the door, fight the monster, um, see if you can uh, survive. Uh, I do make the encounters tough to make it interesting, um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a great chance to test out any character builds that you have knocking around in your D&D Beyond account. Um, once, you, once you buy a ticket, and if you're worried about character building and stuff, once you buy a ticket, you are invited to the campaign, so you can have access to all of my source books and stuff uh, through D&D Beyond. So, if you're looking for to make something interesting, it's an easy way to do it. You just you can just uh, buy the ticket, you get the access to to my campaign, and you can get access to all my source books and, and roll up whatever you want. I'm pretty sure I have everything. Yes, I'm pretty sure I have most of the things, <laughs> the vast majority of the things, even Strixhaven. Which gets a lot of shit, but I got it anyway. I had one of my home game players wanted to play a, a bird, a bird person, so I was like, "All right, I'm getting it, just for you, just for you. <laughs> Why not?" Uh, so yeah, check that out. Uh, and with the ticket comes a potion of greater healing for your character to use for that session. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a fun time, and we are we are friendly to new players. So if you are looking, just just try D and D for the first time. It's a great opportunity for it. Um, I think we're at fifth level currently, everybody. So um, if you go through D&D &D Beyond, they do have a, uh, a way to uh, uh, walk you through character building. I'm pretty sure they do have character building tips and tricks and all that fun stuff. And yeah, well, once you, if you buy a ticket, hit me up. You, you're welcome. You're, you're, you get an invite to the Discord too, so you can just message me and ask me any questions if you're, if you're looking on, yeah, get answered about character building. And I can help you any way I can. Uh, so, uh, if you're looking for a non-D&D game to play with your friends and family over video chat, uh, like on your smartphone, all you need uh, on your smartphone, uh, check out tourguidegames.com. They offer on-demand, professionally-led TTRPGs for you and your friends and family. All you need is a smartphone. Uh, you don't even need pen and paper or dice. Your tour guide is more than happy to take care of any note-taking or dice rolling for you. Uh, even then, there's not a whole lot of that required. Uh, the games are very rules light, easy to learn, and a blast to play over the course of an hour or two. Uh, games like All Out of Bubblegum, Time and Temp, Lasers and Feelings, uh, Project Ninja Panda Taco, Guild of Orpheus, Honey Heist, Fiasco, games like that. So 
if you're looking uh, looking to reconnect with your friends uh, during quarantine, or if you've moved recently and you want to reconnect with your family for game night, it's an excellent option for that. Or if you're looking, if you're an employer and you need a team building exercise for either your remote or in-house employees, this is a great opportunity, a great option for that. Um, they've done this several times with great success uh, for for employers. Um, so yeah, check them out if you're interested over at tourguidegames.com. Uh, I mentioned they do not sponsor this stream. Uh, they uh, only uh, I like throwing some, them some business if I can. They are they're good people over there. So uh, aside from that, everyone, please stay safe. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face while you're out and about. Social distance distance whenever possible. Uh, the mask goes over your nose and mouth at the same time. Uh, <laughs> check and see in your area if you are eligible for. Uh, uh, FYI, the Eventbrite link doesn't show any upcoming events. Yes, currently we have no upcoming events uh, because we need to get interest. <laughs> so, oh yes, if you are interested, please, uh, you can either message me through uh, disc, uh, either, yeah, either Instagram or Twitter. I'm Dyson Brews on both of those. So, if you're interested, let me know, and uh, if once we get uh, a good amount of players, we can uh, we can start rolling. Because we have, I have currently two players that are itching to play, <laughs> but we can't really play. With two players, it's just it's just not it's not enough. I mean, you can do you can do a thing with two players, but for what I have planned out, it's not it's not going to be sufficient. They'll just die. <laughs> the characters will just die. Uh, so, if we get enough get enough uh, uh, a head of steam and enough players, um, I mean, I, I think at least one more player is really all we need. <laughs> Actually, technically, I have three, but um, one of them couldn't make it the past couple months. But I think. They're back in it, but anyway, yes, yeah, so we're trying to get uh, we're trying to get some new players in, uh, just to get it get it going again. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're interested, feel free to message me on uh, on uh, on the Instagrams or the Twitter, um, and I will uh, I'll follow up with you and answer any questions you need. Um, but aside from that, uh, check and see in your area if you are eligible for vaccines or boosters, and do it up because it's free, and it only hurts for a little bit. <laughs> Literally, it's it's fine. Um, Amorphous, thank you so much, and uh, and see you. And uh, aside from that, everyone, just be excellent to each other. And uh, we'll see you Thursday for Breath of the Wild, and following Saturday, hopefully, for Skyrim. Uh, bye bye. Hey, what's up? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and also hit the bell if you want to know when I post some new stuff. Uh, you can see some of my other stuff right over there on the screen.